Very good morning, you beautiful souls. Welcome to it. My name is Graham Richards. You are live with Expresso on a beautiful start to a brand new day. It is the 15th of January. Um, the month is flying by. The new year has gotten off to a rollicking start, so hopefully you're enjoying it and enjoying coming to grips with a new, new year, whether it's back at work or, of course, today, back at school. How are you feeling? Are you apprehensive? I'd imagine a very emotional day for parents, um, letting their little ones out into the world for the first time. In fact, our JBD is going to be out on the road today she's going to be connecting with some of those gorgeous great ones in their slightly oversized school uniforms with their big bags on their first day of big school it's going to be an awesome day i can promise you for parents that are feeling a little trepidation at letting their little ones enter that brave new world but we are going to be walking with you hand in hand and we'd love to hear your stories of inspiration this morning we'd love to see some gorgeous cute pictures if you've got a little one that is going to be going to big school today please take some pics please share that moment with us We'd love to connect with you and, of course, can do that on our social media platforms. We're going to have a lot of fun um, to help ease the pain once you come back from dropping your little one off at school. We're going to be back in the kitchen today um, doing a huge amount. It's all about the curry on the culinary hotline today. Um, we'll open our airwaves for you to be able to savor those flavors with us. We'll give you a bit of a lowdown in just a moment and some of the keywords if you want to be cooking along with us this morning. Um, but it's going to be an inspirational day one way or another. A lot of fun, a lot to travel we'll inspire you to go out there and explore the world give you some great travel deals as well and of course connect you to um, our friends on the show who are feeling the emotion of that first day back at school um, just as much as you are I can promise you so let's see um, if you're gonna need a little extra jumper today or if it's gonna be a hot one in your part of the world Kutle good morning hun what can we expect from the weather a very good morning to you too, Graham. A good morning to you, South Africa. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. It's hump day, and you know what they say, once we have reached the peak of the week, it's downhill straight to the weekend. Let's start the day off on a very good note by checking out what's happening with the weather for the day. Starting off in Johannesburg, the rain has cleared up finally, and the sun is out. Pleasantly warm temperatures can be expected that range between 16 to 28 degrees. Enjoy a warm day ahead, Johannesburg. Now moving over to Durban, mainly sunny conditions are expected with a light northeasterly wind for the entire day. Cloud cover slightly increases toward the evening. Stay hydrated. And in the friendly city today, the warm weather continues with partly cloudy conditions and high humidity. A southeasterly wind will provide slight relief from the heat. Don't forget your sunblock, everybody in PE. Now in the Mother City, Cape Town seems to be heating up more and more. <laughs> Our humid conditions are expected with plenty of sunshine a breeze picks up towards the afternoon and increases as the day progresses well that's it for the weather we're going to have a more extensive look of what's happening with the weather a little later on as you can see i'm walking barefoot i still need to finish off my look but first i'm going to start off with this beautiful dress that i'm wearing as you know that cape town is going to be a very sunny week so i decided to go with a very light material you know woolies has got us covered with this um dress with an el elastic waist belt so it's very comfortable it's very flattering around your waist and your body and I think it also works for every single body size now for the shoes Ooh. I don't know what I want to wear actually. Okay, definitely not the boots because we are still in summer. So I'm thinking something a little bit more sandaly. Ooh, you can never go wrong with nude shoes. This one, very nude, goes perfectly with my accessories. Also, the chunk heel is very comfortable. You can go all day with these shoes. And the strap is just this very, a uh, simple detail, but also makes a perfect statement. So while I finish up getting ready with my look, let's check out what's cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> Uh, what's cooking indeed it's going to be spicy today we are making the curries next a very good morning good morning um i i see we've got our garam masala is, is all ready to rock and roll what's on the menu today it's a culinary hotline so it's yeah. it's going to be a big cooking day on the show what are we making well it's a spice inspired um theme so 
So mm. we are going to be making our own homemade masala. Ooh, wow. Using all your whole spices. Um, Zion and Anal are going to be in later to show us exactly how they make theirs. And they are going to be showing us how to make a roti from scratch. And that's something that, you know, people conveniently buy. It's so easy to make yourself as well. Yeah, man. You, you want to be able to create those flavors, every flavor on that table. You must have your hand in doing it. Any hacks, anything interesting coming our way today? Uh, I would say your curry, we're making a curry. So mm. you can get that going right from the beginning of the day, let it sit, and a curry is so nice that you can leave it overnight, it gets even better with flavor. Perfect mm. for jaffles, you can add for lunches. So clever. And also curry freezes super well. So it's something that you can prep in bulk and, and have throughout the week, which is a, a very handy thing to have at home. Oh, completely, especially going back to school, you can start, um, you know, just get the big biggest pot that you have in your kitchen out and start <laughs> making one. it and you can cook along with us today and um, we'll give you all of the details but literally from creating your own masala um, and your own roti through to that finished product we've got you covered it's going to be a spicy Wednesday morning. Okay I won't ask you that then what do you want me to ask you? Oh, I can't wait for that. As you can see, we're back in the beauty room, but I'm not running solo. I am with our head of makeup, Bernice, to so make sure that we look on fleek all day, every day. So Bernice, right now, I only have one side done when yeah. it comes to <laughs> my wig line. And you are here to demonstrate how to achieve a perfect line, right? Yes, so um, always make sure that you have the right brush. So a small angled brush. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually easy to use a gel line Liner. Instead um, of a, a, a liquid eyeliner? Yes, it's just easier to control. You can drop your chin a little bit. Okay. And then always go from thin to thick. So inner corner, thinner to your outer corner. Draw your line. And then how long did it take you to perfect you know, getting the right wing? Because I know with me, I always struggle with it till this day. I think doing it on yourself is um, more difficult mm -hmm. than actually doing it on somebody else because you've got more control. Yeah. But um, I honestly think that practice makes perfect, so it took me a while. But once you have it, it's quite easy. And then it's easier just to draw the outer lines and then to go and colour it in afterwards. Mm. Um, so for beginners, the best way to achieve one is by first drawing the outer liner yes. first and then going back in to color it in to make it more, look it? more full. There we go. Are we done? Yeah, pretty much. That was very, you make it look so easy, Bernice. <laughs> it's all a lie. It's not that easy, everybody, but I guess that's exactly why you're our favorite. Hand, yes. yeah, you do have a steady hand. So it's an angled brush. Mm. It's better to use a, a, gel, a liner. gel liner. And then also, um, like, just makeup looks complementing the actual liners, either keeping it clean, just yeah. the liner with a bright <laughs> lip, or like today, if you close your eyes, we actually did a little bit of a cat eye. Mm -hmm. So just like taking your eyeshadow a little bit to the outer corners to just increase um, that dramatic look. And it also gives my eyes this amazing mm. shape. Thank you so much, Bernice. You're we welcome. absolutely love these sessions for you. This is what we do. We take your makeup from basic and elevate it to a whole new level now we absolutely love hearing from you on social media platforms what's happening Graham oh it's back to school baby yeah. it's back to school I um, like I'm back at school hey, you got the way way I, yeah. I, I would imagine you would have been well turned out for your first day at school eh? I really like, was. It, like you you really would have taken that quite seriously Goodness eh? yeah. did I. man even even on the first day I remember going to Posh Central School um, Wow, this is 1996 we're talking about? Mm. Yeah, 1990s, 1996, yes. And um, I remember just like not even wanting to get my shirt dirty on the day. So like <laughs> walking like this, like it was nicely, crisply ironed. Perfectly and just wanting wide. to, yeah, just be cut out of a block. I, I think for me, the cutest thing is that uh, the, the school uniforms are all just slightly oversized. Yeah. The great ones, <laughs> and their bags are like really big on their back, and they just like yeah. come in all fresh eyed. Um, and of course, I, I, I think for parents, it's going to be quite emotional. So there'll be some some red eyed parents out there. It's got to be quite a thing letting go of your little one into the, that that brave new Absolutely, world. Absolutely, yeah. January the fifteenth of sure. uh, on, in two thousand and twenty is back to school day, and so we want to know all about your experiences and. 
do you have any cool, funny, embarrassing <laughs> back to school, uh, first day of school memories? Please do share them with us on Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. would love to hear from you. Maybe you're brave enough, post some pictures if you're taking your little please, ones to school. We'd love to do, see those. Please. Those are always the cutest things. Oh, I was just thinking, my first day of high school, I, I came from a boarding school to a new school, and as I was getting off the bus, I missed my bus stop. I'm sure I've told you this before, and then I was on a on a bus with an all-girls school was the next drop-off. <laughs> so I missed my whole school had gotten off. It was just girls on the bus. I'm like, oh, no. So I, like, screamed, sprinting. My bag got caught in the door, and I got pinned That's to the side of the bus. Thing. I just stuck there because that, that door kind of held me pinned to the door. Hey, yeah, yeah. Thanks. And then you got, back, you got back in? I had to get back in, and that was that. Wait, so wait, I had to walk what? an extra two kilometers to get back to school and arrive late to my first day. So. <laughs> Um, not only day. your first day of school will go better than <laughs> that, but please share those beautiful pictures. It is a special day. <laughs> the time is now 10 minutes past six. It's time for us to have the first look at what's happening in the world. Starting off with our national news, the Gauteng Education Department has reluctantly thrown a lifeline to parents of grade one and grade eight pupils who are late with their applications for the 2020 school year. Education MEC Panyaza Le Sufi said online registration was reopened at midnight last night to give them another chance. President Cyril Ramaphosa says South Africa is embarking on a new trajectory of self-generation of energy. He was addressing the second annual business economic in Daba in Santon. And right now on to international news. The United States wishes to reduce its military presence in Africa. Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, said yesterday it wishes to focus on more on, focus more on responding to threats posed by Russia and China. A tourist in Thailand has become the first person outside China diagnosed with a new pneumonia-like virus that has already infected dozens of people. One person has succumbed and 41 cases of the virus have been recorded so far. And finally, another day, another accolade. Sia Golisi was yesterday voted the UK Rugby Union Writers Club Personality of the Year for 2019 for leading South Africa to the, to their Emotional World Rugby Cup triumph in Japan. The Springbok captain bagged the annual Pat Marshall Memorial Award at the RUWC's annual dinner in London following a poll of its 200 plus members. The shortlist for the 2019 award, named after the former Daily Express rugby correspondent, was dominated by South Africa, with coach Rassi Rasmus and scrum half Faf de Klerk also nominated. Golisi fo follows in the footsteps of greats such as the in inaugural recipient Washman Mervyn Davis in 1936, the late Jonah Lomu, Martin Johnson, Johnny Wilkinson, Dan Carter, and former Springbok captain Francois Binar. Right now, it's time to delve into the world of sport. Thank you so much, Kutle, from Rugby to Cricket. We move after hitting 40 from just 32 deliveries in his debut for the Brisbane Heat in the Big Bash League in Australia. Former Proteus star A.B. de Villiers stated that he would love to return to the South African national cricket team. And staying with cricket, Aaron Finch and David Warner led Australia to a 10-wicket win over India. That was in the first one-day international in Mumbai in their series. And, of course, on to rugby. The junior Springboks will face England, Fiji and hosts Italy in Pool C of the 2020 World Rugby Under-20 Championships taking place across four Italian cities. And in football, Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur, they've advanced to the FA Cup fourth round after beating Middlesbrough 2-1 in a replay of the third round at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last night. Then staying with football, defending La Liga champions Barcelona, they've sacked their head coach Ernesto Valverde and announced that former Real Betis coach Kike uh, Satin will now take charge of the Spanish Giants. More on all of those stories as we progress. Right now, let's get a broader scope of that weather. We have asked you to send in your sunrise pictures. Louise Sherry sent us this incredible sunrise picture from Amanzi Dordi, where plenty of sunshine can be expected with pleasant temperatures, reaching a maximum of 29 degrees. Thank you so much, Louise, for that picture. And Alan Rudniki sent us this beautiful skyline from Cape Town, where humid conditions can be expected with times of sun and clouds and a strong northeasterly wind, reaching a maximum of 27 degrees. Please keep those pictures going and flowing in our 
social media. We absolutely love seeing how you wake up in your part of the country. For the rest of South Africa, we're starting off with Polo Gwane with a lower of 15, reaching a maximum of 28 degrees. In Bombela, it's 18, 29. And Pretoria, it peaks at 30 today with a low of 17. And the lowest temperature in the country is Johannesburg with a low of 15, reaching a maximum of 28. After a very rainy weekend, I'm pretty sure Johannesburg needs the sun today. In my gang, it's a low of 18, reaching a peak of 31 degrees. Klekstov, 18, reaching a peak of 31 as well. And in Kimberley, it's a partly cloudy day with a low of 20, reaching a high of 37. Ooh, it's going to be a hot one in Kimberley. Make sure to remain hydrated. Clear skies for Bloemfontein with a high of 33 degrees and a low of 16. Reuters Bay has a minimum of 21 today with a maximum of 31 degrees. Peter Maritzburg, 1830. And North Eastly wind of 15 kilometers an hour can be expected in Durban with a low of 22, reaching a high of 30 degrees. M Tata down in the Eastern Cape with a low of 17, reaching a high of 34 degrees. And high humidity for East London with a low of 22 and a high of 30. And plenty of sunshine for Kredok at a peak of 38 degrees and a low of 18. And Port Elizabeth peaks at 28 today with a low of 21 degrees. High humidity for George at a minimum of 20, reaching a maximum of 26 degrees. And Sutherland can expect temperatures ranging from 19, reaching a high of 37. South Eastly wind of 28 kilometers an hour in the mother city Cape Town with a minimum minimum rather of 21, reaching a maximum of 27 degrees. Vusta is a very sunny day with the maximum of 39 degrees and a low of 18. And Springbok, a max of 38 with the minimum of 21. And the highest temperature in the country once again is Uppington with a maximum of 41 degrees and a low of 26 degrees. It looks like it's going to be a very warm day generally in South Africa. Make sure to keep cool, keep hydrated and make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, and it continues to get hotter in Uppington. It was 27 degrees yesterday, and people in Cape Town were crying. Okay, double that. <laughs> Shouldn't there be like a, a 1,000 square meter field just full of solar panels absorbing all of that? I was going to say one of those like spray Uppington. things. Yeah. No, <laughs> forget that. So Let's use the it. natural resources. Absorb all of that heat. Yeah, make it the pump solar it into a capital plant of the world. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, for let's sure. fill up some batteries and like, you know. Do it. Renewable Do it energy right for the, the wind. The problem is they can't because <laughs> if you step outside, then you, you get burnt to a crisp. Wow. Oh, stay safe out in the heat. Um, but speaking of <sighs> renewable energy, somebody who might seem like they've had renewable energy all their lives, yeah, especially in their from, yeah. Barbara Streisand, who's had a career spanning some six decades of success. Sure. In fact, uh, she was she's one of the most successful women in multiple entertainment industries. And she also happens to be the highest selling female recording artist of that's all time. I mean, I, no disrespect, but that is quite surprising yeah. to me. I mean, that's, I, I suppose, because she spans so many genres and um, she's also a phenomenal actress. She produces incredible women. Um, and I love this quote, dude. Go ahead. Um, feel this. Let this resonate with you. Doubt can motivate you, so don't be afraid of it. Confidence and doubt are at two ends of the scale, and you need both. They balance each other out. I love that. Wow. Hey, it's the, so one often you might thing, think yeah. that doubt is going to be that thing that brings you down, that yeah. you don't believe in yourself enough, but a healthy little dose thereof. I find maybe exactly that's the thing. Maybe if it makes you scared or if you feel a doubt, go straight towards it. Tackle it, conquer it, crush push it. Push a little bit. Love of that, man. Thank you, Barbara Streisand.
back. You're live with Express on the 15th of January. First day back at school, so good luck, parents. Remind you again, we're going to be connecting with some of those gorgeous grade ones in their oversized little school uniforms. Jamie me. is going to be out at Camps Bay um, School connecting with the grade ones, so can't wait for that. But right now, we delve into a little bit of a tech update. Uh, maybe you've packed your first lunchbox yes. for the, the first day of school, uh, but you're worried about what you're packing going cold. There is an answer. Yes, there is. So we're still focusing on the Consumer Electronics Show that was held in Las Vegas. And what happens at these shows is that some products um, pop up that solve problems you didn't even know you had. <laughs> the heat box is one, one of such products, which is essentially a lunchbox that uses steam to warm up your food. Uh, How about that? Very clever. According to the Dutch startup behind Heatbox, it is better than using a microwave as it maintains important nutrients in the food. The near final prototype is a relatively large container, probably larger than something we would typically take like, to work. Can you work. fit it That's in your massive. school? Can you <laughs> fit it in your school bag? Is what That's, I want to know. But you know those grade one kids have those giant bags. I was so going to say, but they're like teetering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with an 18 um, megahertz battery, which could take some some time to recharge due to its large capacity. You also need to add a small amount of water to the box before leaving for work in order for steaming to take place. Nice. The total process will take about eight minutes to freely heat the food. Okay, That's so cool. the health claims still need to be tested and the company wasn't specific uh. about whether it relates to leftovers or just freshly made food. I don't understand why leftovers would be a problem. What do you mean? Like heating up leftovers from the previous night. I don't know, man. Maybe there's something that happens on a on a micro level mm. that might be a bit dodgy, but it, it's cool. It's a clever idea. Yeah, I exactly. think it's a clever it's idea. Clever. It's just that's all you're going to fit into your bag. It's a bit big. <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe they should just give it straps and you can walk around with your, your heat box on your back. Really interesting stuff. This caught my attention yesterday. You mm. actually mentioned the story in the news. Um, very, very, very interesting stuff. So we reported in the news yesterday, SpaceX, is obviously planning to take people around the moon mm. in the years to come, I think in three years' time around, as a holiday excursion of sorts, if yeah. you've got the money. On the first flight of the SpaceX moon voyage will be Yasaka Mayazawa. Okay, he's a Japanese billionaire. You might have heard the name before. But he has bought several tickets and is looking for a female <laughs> partner to join him on this historic trip. Mm. What a way, what a carrot to dangle. I love that. So on his website, he is currently promoting a campaign that's sells the opportunity in a very much bachelor style contest and also makes it clear that he is looking for a significant other, not just a travel companion, but yeah. this is, he's got long-term plans for you, okay? So, <laughs> so be aware of that if you're gonna enter. According to the site, he has a long-held dream of going to space and adds that he wants to visit such a special place together with a special someone. Talk mm. about you. I don't know if it'll be their first date, but that would it make a spectacular be. first date. No, it can't be, imagine, imagine. now you are bumping heads all the way work. in the moon. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work out now. You've got, you've got a limited space. <laughs> you can't exactly go to the other side of the, the spaceship. Um, so we don't know how much he paid back in September of 2018 for the privilege of being the first person on this journey around the moon. That's incredible. Um, of course, this doesn't land on the moon, but there are uh, lunar trips planned by NASA and the like. But it was uh, pretty sizable. And according to Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO, the amount was enough to partially pay for the development of the the vehicle itself saying at the time he puts his money where his mouth is he wow. is legit so he's obviously already paid so the vehicle is called starship how cool is that and can carry six Look to eight that. people depending on the layout that is ultimately chosen and it's expected to, to start flying in quarter one of this year according to my so look out on on spacex's social media platforms you'll probably start seeing test flights happening as we speak and the starship needs a separate booster rocket called the super heavy to get the vehicle to deeper space and it's going to deep space. It's Just going, look at that. How sleek is that, right? It's so cool. It's, what I love about Elon Musk's stuff, there is a bit of a retro feel about his look and feel as well. Yeah. Um, you can see it with a lot of his vehicles. Very, very cool stuff. In fact, I would suggest you go onto social media right now and just do a little um, search of SpaceX and see what's crackalacking. But that's what we've been tracking on at the tech front.
It's a Wednesday morning and time right now for another feature where we focus on the unconventional side of the law where we call it So Now What? And we're joined once again by our expert lawyer and director at Legalese.coza, Eitan Stern. So today's question is, um, I sold an item online and I didn't receive my money, so now what? And we'll be focusing on what your legal rights and recourses are when it comes to being scammed while selling and buying through personal online methods. Great to have you again with us, Eitan. Nice to be here. So, as you can imagine, at about this mm. time of the year, January is hitting us hard. <laughs> Not Muniwari. Yeah, exactly. January. Um, so you might have a few gifts that you received over uh, yeah. the December period that you decided maybe they're not really worth it, so I'm going to sell it. <laughs> or you sell something old and you do it online. Let's talk about what can actually happen and, and first focus on when it, it, it becomes a person-to-person -person sale mm. kind of thing. What, what are the recommended things to do? Okay, so, you know, as the internet has entered our lives and social media has become a bigger and bigger thing, the world's become smaller. We're more connected. So it used to be that you could only buy things from a store. Now suddenly everyone's become their own store because of the introduction of marketplaces mm -hmm. like Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace, which is pretty, uh, which is becoming pretty big. So, yeah. you know, so you, the advantage of selling through these sites is that the sites can verify people and so you've got some sort of recourse mm -hmm. against the person. Um, the difficulty in, in buying something from person to person is that your, 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 your recourse is a little bit more limited if something goes wrong. Yeah. Whereas if you're buying from a store, you know, they've got a place of business, there's laws which apply to them, that's obviously going to be the safest. So it's fantastic that we can buy things online, and I really recommend we, we do start to buy people second-hand goods instead of always buying new, but just note that it comes with a bit of a, a, a caution around it's hard to verify those people. Yeah, you kind of, kind of have to do your due diligence For to make sure. sure that you go to a reputable website, yes. uh, you've at least seen, you've seen ads about them. Or and that, yes, and that you've seen the goods ideally before you pay money over. Yeah. You've heard about them from friends, hopefully. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned things like Facebook Marketplace mm. and Gumtree, which are the more regular ones that we know yeah. about. But how regulated are these websites and online uh, platforms in terms of the law, if any? Are there any laws yeah. that govern them? And then also, how liable are they when, okay. they come, when it comes to uh, the transaction going awry for any reason? So it's a great question. The answer is they're not really that regulated. So there's certain laws that they'll have to subscribe to if they're in an online site, like uh, protection of data laws um, and that sort of thing. But it's Essentially, their role is just to play an intermediary. They are not the, the, the company that is selling you the good. And they make that quite clear. So every time you go into one of these websites, there's most likely going to be uh, terms and conditions on the website. Um, sometimes written by us at Legalese. Yeah. Um, and those terms and conditions make it clear that, the, that that is just a marketplace, that that is not the, the person selling the site. So you generally don't have a lot of recourse against the site unless the site has done something wrong. But if you buy something from, so if you buy a bicycle on Facebook Marketplace and the bicycle breaks, uh, you've got no recourse against Facebook Marketplace. And yeah, yeah. You would know that because if you check their terms and conditions where you've agreed to that when you, end, when you who, created your profile. Who has the time? That fine print is yeah. 300 pages. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess uh, it is that important. It's it's kind of it is that important. It's one of those things, I suppose. You're not going to read a, a contract is binding whether you read it or not. Yeah. So if yeah. you're agreeing to use one of these sites and you you are risking a lot of money on these sites, it's worth knowing what you what you're risking. Yeah. So all things being equal with mm. the site and things going well in terms of the transaction and you receive the goods, but something does maybe mm. go awry later on. What are the steps to take if you're looking to take legal action against the person from whom you? bought or okay. sold. So the name of the game here is really information. The more information you have about the person that you've bought something from, the better. Yeah. Now, when you're buying from someone directly, you don't have the Consumer Protection Act as a recourse, as you would if you go into a store, oh. because it's, it's not the, the transaction isn't within their ordinary course of business. The Consumer okay. Protection Act doesn't cover. They're not a retailer. They're not a retailer. But you still have common law remedies. If something goes wrong, you can still take the person to the small claims court or sue the person. So the name of the game is information. Do you know with, how to find the person? Person? Do you have their contact details? Uh, do you have their physical address? Do you have their ID number? Hmm. If you were going to take action against this person, could you actually do it? Do you have the information? And I, re I remember when I was younger, I bought a car from someone I met on Gumtree. Which I'm telling you, if I ever bump into that person again, um, <laughs> it'll be a scene. But the car was, uh, was, uh, it was, it was broken. It was quite badly broken. And as soon as I called him back afterwards, 
never picked up the phone wow. again. Wow. So, and that was kind of my fault. I really yeah. should have had a bit more information about him um, if something had gone wrong. So if you, you know, don't be A-ton. If you're gonna be buying something online, you really wanna get as much information as possible. And then after that, uh, you can go to the small claims court uh, in order to make a claim. And it's always a really good idea to notify the marketplace that you've met the person on, to say, here's someone on your marketplace who's a con artist or a fraud store selling defective goods. Um, and it might not get your money back, but it might stop other people from getting scammed. Yeah, well, great advice there. And we're gonna ask you to stay a little bit longer so we can continue no our conversation. We're talking about your rights and recourses when it comes to uh, selling of goods or buying uh, of goods online, because a lot of people are doing that these days. But hey, if you don't get that money, that January might extend a whole lot longer. <laughs> Feel the pain. Suddenly Imagine. January just got really long. Have you been scammed before? No. And <laughs> I pray it doesn't happen any time. Well, this soon. is why you must listen and you must educate yourself. It can happen so well. These guys are so good. And obviously when you're online, a lot of the time you don't even have the person there. Yeah. Just be vigilant. But we're going to continue that discussion. Really interesting and important discussion with Eitan Stern. In, so now what? So after the break. Together we will fly Just relax, it's just us two Just do you Right now we're continuing our discussion with lawyer and director at Legalese.coza, Eitan Stern, about what your legal rights are when it comes to being scammed while selling and buying through personal online methods, which a lot of people are doing these days. Mm. So Eitan, what are the legal channels to follow? Say you've sold something, you haven't received your money, or you've bought something and it hasn't met the requirements or the descriptions yeah. that uh, were sold to you. What are the channels to follow? You said that they're common law remedies and I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's the line that we're following. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, it's always a good idea to contact the marketplace. So to actually have it at that point, it might be worth having a look at the marketplace rules to see if there's any rules that you can take recourse against okay, the person. Yeah. Some of them will have rules. For example, 
um, on a marketplace set like Airbnb, they have a whole recourse of what to, of what you need to do if you rent your place out and something is damaged. Yeah. So it could very well be that the rules in the site that you're using is going to have some rules around around what to do. Mm -hmm. Some of them have insurance for things that go, that go wrong. Some of them might hold on to the money until you're happy with the goods. So first port of call, check out the website that you bought it from. Mm -hmm. Next uh, port of call is exactly it's your common law remedy. So it's essentially to sue the person for for damages or to say like, well, I've bought something from you and it, it, this is defective, so now you need to give me my money back. Um, small claims court is a great option. If you have a claim of under 20,000 rand, mm -hmm. you can go to the small claims court. If it's over 20,000 rand, you might need to uh, chat to a lawyer. But the great thing about the small claims court is that you don't need a lawyer to go there. It's completely free. Okay. You go down to the small claims court. And you can they help you through the claim. process. They should help you through the process, yeah. yeah. And it's actually quite a good remedy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's those are kind of your recourse. What, did, this brings me to one of my favorite mm. legal terms, footstuits. Yes, a fantastic one. If you're buying online, you got to know footstuits. Buyer beware. Yeah. That's a legal. That's a. It's a. It's part of our law, which says if you're a purchaser in a transaction, it's your responsibility to make sure that you've seen the goods, that you're happy with it, because it's buyer beware. If there's a, if there's something that's wrong with it and you haven't picked it up, unless it was intentionally hidden from yeah. you. You've got to be aware. So it's not even up to the seller. Say I'm buying a car, right? Mm -hmm. It's not even up to the seller to state, let's say, in the description somewhere there to say, food to it. I mean, just putting that there means that you're buying the product as, as is. is. They don't even need to do that. They don't really even need to do it. Now, it's going to depend because there's lots of case law around buying and selling cars. There have been lots of different instances in buying and selling cars. But for sure, they don't need to do it. If you buy a car, it's your responsibility to have Ooh. checked out the car, taken it to the AA, get them kind of to check it. As long as you've been given the recourse and as long as nothing has been intentionally hidden from you, then, you know, buyer beware. Okay. Um, so... How much are you within your rights to, uh, let's say something's gone wrong and yeah. you've bought something from uh, Eitan triple five six seven <laughs> on Gumtree, on Gumtree <laughs> and he's sure. absolutely terrible. Yeah. Right? He, the car he sold me is terrible. Now I want to go into Gumtree and completely tell everyone out there yes. on the platform that you are not to be dealt with. You're terrible. This has been my experience. Are you allowed to do that or is that seen as some kind okay. of slandering of, of somebody's character and name? So it really depends on the extent that you do it. Yes, you are allowed to. You, we have freedom of speech. We can say whatever we want online but there's a very there's a line there where freedom of speech stops and where slander or defamation starts so you know mm. if you're going out there and saying things that are not true that are irrelevant to the situation that are going to haunt damage this person's reputation unfairly etc then you might be causing uh, harm to that person that might be defini defamation but if you're going and you're telling the facts this is what happened I got sold something that was defective they said it, uh, it it had four wheels when it actually only had three <laughs> wheels as long as you're telling the facts of what happened then that's totally fine that we, it's it's part of how social media works yeah review process we want people to review and give honest reviews so mm -hmm. that you know, this online community can form uh, opinions about good sellers and bad sellers. Yeah. Now, another way in which people are trying to stretch their money during yes. the month of January is through online pawn shops. Because uh, you can, you can yeah. you know, kind of loan your item to the pawn shop. Yes. They loan you money. And then, yeah. of course, you need to pay back the loan that they've given you in order to get your, yes. your item back. So what, what do you need to be careful of? Uh, okay. about using these facilities, one. And secondly, uh, making sure that you are able to pay back the loan, I'm guessing, in accordance to the terms and conditions yes. that, they, that they state you need mm. to pay it out for. Otherwise, you might suffer some kind of penalties like for the sure. retention of your item. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, generally, if you're looking at these sort of ways to get credit or loans that are outside of, you know, banks or financial institutions, you're going to be stepping into risky territory. And loan sharks don't get the, the name loan sharks because, for, for no reason. Yeah, generally. and they're not registered FSB. They're not, they're not registered FSPs. They don't, they don't get the shark part of their name because that they're very friendly and, and fair, and do, fair do, guys do, and girls. Do, do, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's definitely something to be aware about. 100% if you're going to be going to a pawn shop or, or, or a loan shark of any sort, read the terms and conditions. Only go to legal ones where you've got the, with the law behind you. If you're yeah. stepping into the Wild West, don't be scared if you're going to get ripped off. And then uh, with pawn shops, you do have the Consumer Protection Act, which, okay. that, which will protect you because that is within their ordinary course of business. All right. Um, but generally, you know, I would say step in with, with utter caution. And, of course, the best way to make sure that you don't land up in January is to, uh, to make sure that you don't spend money that you don't have.
Excellent advice. And sure. on that note, thank you very much, sir. Nice to much see you. Much appreciated, of course. As always, you can catch Eitan online at Lawyers of Legalese and, of course, also on the website legalese.co.za. Uh, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Uh, thinking about our first day back at school. Good morning, Princess. Good morning. How are you doing? Good I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Can you remember your first day of school? Can you remember? Yes. Hey, yes. Was it stressful? Were you Great happy? Bye. Can you I remember? I was so excited. Really? Yes. I mm. prepare everything at night, polish my shoes. Mm -hmm. Yes. We born and get out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shining. Shining. Mm. And it must have been a mistake. When like that. do you can, remember? I, I was lucky. I can remember my first day of grade one. My, I had an older sister at the same school, so she was able to show. I must have been much worse for her, mm. having like a little idiot brother following her around and everything. But it's <laughs> um, almost every school I've been to, there's been a connection from my older sister sister having oh, been there, so okay. I'm always kind of, wow. you know, it's hot, but it's, um, yeah, it. yeah. so I can remember it, so I love you, sis, thanks for, for, for looking after me. Can you remember your first day of school? I do remember, but it was very sad, so I'm not going to share about oh, this. Oh, no, <laughs> it's breaking my heart. Say, please, can you cheer up with a little please. coffee, sis? <laughs> um, we're going to be connecting with Jamie Lee and a whole lot of gorgeous grade ones um, at Camps Bay School, of course, preparing for the that brave new passage of life. Um, and of course the parents bravely with them as well we'll see now <laughs> <laughs> only the highest grade arabica beans mcafe great coffee simple see you after the break Welcome back to it, your feel-good breakfast show live, large, and in charge on this uh, January the 15th, 2020. Thanks for yes. joining us at the start of a brand new day. And we are very, very excited this morning to have the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra with us. And they are hosting their 14th International Summer Music uh, Festival that takes place at the Cape Town City Hall starting tomorrow until the 2nd of February. Then a much-loved favorite among all or orchestra aficionados is the Cape Town Philharmonic uh, Orchestra's performance at the Kirsten Bosch Gardens. This on Sunday the 19th of January and we're joined by the orchestra CEO Louis Heinemann to give us all the details. Great to have you back in the studio with us. Thank you, Kurti. And Happy New Year. Happy oh, thank New Year. Thank you. <laughs> um, Louis, the season is supported by the city of Cape Town, but why did you establish the Cape Town um, International Summer Music Festival and what does it do for the city? Well, I think it's uh, the marketing idea started uh, 13 years ago. I can't believe, I remember very well 13 years ago when we started the festival and we thought, will it last? And it's 14 years later, uh, 13 years later, and we, we're about to have the 14th festival. Yeah. This time of the year, there's a lot of visitors to Cape Town and yes. we want to showcase the talent that we have in Cape Town and our only resident orchestra in, in town um, for, the, for everybody, for all the visitors, so that they 
can come and see what what we have uh, to offer in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. So we thought uh, uh, rather not having uh, concerts every Thursday night over a long period to have concerts uh, on, a, on Thursdays and Sundays and uh -huh. then in the middle we have the Kirstenbosch uh, experience because yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Do you tell us more about that? I mean we're seeing yeah. pictures of it now, uh, you know, having been there over the summer concert uh, uh, series as well, uh, the most beautiful wow. backdrop, the experience itself. A couple of years ago Time magazine said it must be the most beautiful concert hall on the planet and I agree if you sit there with 5,000 other people sipping a bit of uh, uh, vino bubbly or, <laughs> and, uh, and you see that even children running around and with 5,000 other people wow. in the relaxed beautiful nature of uh, an, an environment of, of Kirsten Boss to see uh, the orchestra and to hear the orchestra uh, in that beautiful environment it is is really special and that what's make Cape Town special many of our of our concert goers have kids and they don't come to formal concerts so often but this is the oh, one yes. and we've been doing it for 20 consecutive years mm -hmm. playing every year in the summer in Kirschenbosch and this year we're going to do uh, in March we're doing a second concert so I think it's one of those special um, occurrences in Cape Town and all the visitors uh, from overseas uh, they walk out there and say well we haven't experienced anything like this in the world yeah uh, in this environment with the mountain as a backdrop uh, and to hear the orchestra live uh, in Kirstenbosch. I so, can imagine. Yeah. It's, a, it's an experience and a half. And as you've mentioned, I mean, we've been to, you know, the summer concerts in Kirstenbosch, so it's a definitely must visit. And also, there's so much that goes behind the production of such, you know, a production. What goes into a production of this uh, magnitude? A full t to run a full-time orchestra, you know, uh, it's very expensive, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's labor intensive you have between 50 and, and 70 people depending on, on the work that you play on stage and to coordinate but we've got two wonderful youth orchestras and uh, I, I believe um, the concert master one of our, of our youth orchestra Jordan Brooks will play for us this morning the talent that we have in Cape Town um, is amazing mm. yeah. I don't know where they come from but every year there are new youngsters uh, through our youth orchestras and hopefully most of them or the best ones will end up in the professional orchestra mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just amazing, and yeah. I think we have to celebrate that. And I can tell you, within 50 years or 100 years or 200 years, classical music is going nowhere. We are here to stay. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Love that. Quickly, in terms of the International Summer uh, Festival, what can fans expect? Okay, we've got wise and all two conduct four concerts, two conductors, mm -hmm. uh, and the fifth concert in Kirstenbosch is a local conductor, Brandon F uh, Phillips, of course, yes. uh, our resident conductor. Uh, for the two overseas. Uh, for the four international concerts, we have uh, our principal guest conductor, Bernard Gehler, mm -hmm. uh, who everybody loves in Cape Town. And then we have a new conductor making his debut from America, uh, Brandon Keith Brown. And we're very excited, obviously, to, to show new, uh, showcase new talent to the, to the world mm -hmm. uh, of, of the, from the from international stage to South African audiences. Excellent. And Amazing. four wonderful solos as well. Oh, wow. It sounds like it's going to be uh, an incredible experience and one yeah. not to be missed indeed. So the International Summer Music Festival at City Hall, it starts off tomorrow until the 2nd of February with tickets ranging between 135 and 350 Rand. And of course, don't forget to catch the Kirstenbosch Summer Concert uh, at Kirstenbosch itself on the 19th of January. Louis, thank you very much for joining us. Looking forward to the music. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cannot wait for that performance. Well, summer is definitely upon us. Uh, the temperatures across the land reinforcing that. Summer is definitely a smoothie time, certainly for me. Uh, but if you're a vegan, you might feel like the options on the table are not as exciting as they could be. We're going to dispel that myth here to show us how easy it is to make some nutrient rich and truly delicious smoothies is influencer and model Rati Le Kalakala and vegan food blogger Andy Mashaba. Welcome, ladies, to it. Did I say your surname right? Yes, you did, actually. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. People always get it wrong, so you got it right. Thank you for that. Oh, man, we're off to a flying start. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know. Um, happy Veganuary. Thank um, you. Did I say you that much. right? You said yes. that right. Oh, yes. man, I'm off to a flying start. You can see I've been, I've been getting my nutrients in my smoothies. <laughs> there we go. Um, before we, we delve into what looks like a really healthy and flavorful smoothie, there is, I think, a myth around, because I know this because we've moved to 
a lot of plant-based diets, kind of recipes on the show, but that being vegetarian is boring, that veganism is boring. How have you found in your journey, in your plant-based journey, have you been able to dispel that myth for yourself? Definitely, for sure. I've actually found that it's the complete opposite. There's really? so much variety and combinations, flavors in vegan food, and that's actually what inspired me to start my blog, so... Yeah. Um, and, and people, I think, are cottoning on to the idea, whatever your lifestyle choices related to it are, there is health, there is color, there is vibrance in, in vegetables that we actually, on a, a base level, respond to. It's also visually beautiful. How have you found, as, a, as, a, as someone who is an influencer and kind of driving this message online, what has your plant-based journey been like? My plant-based journey has been amazing, honestly. Like, I, was, I knew I was confident going into it, and it's been amazing so far. I've seen benefits in my skin. Really? I've also seen that my energy levels have increased. It's honestly been amazing for me. Um, I hope yeah. you, you're taking notes because this is what we need at the start <laughs> no, of a do, brand new year. Do. And it's summer as well. You want good skin, good energy, like... Well, and it's, it's light and you know exactly what's going into it as well, which exactly. is, I think, an important component. When we talk about the health benefits of going plant-based, what does that, that mean to you? What have you discovered? Well, I've definitely discovered, so I can side with Rati on this, my energy levels have just gone up and you feel so much lighter and you know exactly what's going into everything because you make a lot of the things yourself. Yeah, completely. And it pops. It pops with green and it pops with flavour in yeah, this case. Definitely, All right. definitely. Um, so let's get busy. Yeah, what are we going to be making this morning? So this morning we're going to be making the peanut butter and green smoothie. Okay. So right. when I was saying interesting flavor combos is what I'm talking about. So right. what we're going to put into here is some spinach. Baby spinach is Baby so spinach. healthy. It's, it's so one of those with so and much honestly, iron. Honestly, this is my favorite way to eat a whole bunch of kale and spinach first thing in the morning. It's well, this thing, so you're good. not going to catch me having like a spinach and kale salad in the morning. <laughs> um, it's just not going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to put in some frozen banana. Okay. And what that's going to do is make it really nice and creamy and cold as well. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, summertime, so. And that's a nice way, I mean, if you've got um, bananas that are kind of sitting at the end of the, the scale of their lifetime, just slice them up and freeze them yeah. before exactly, they, they exactly. go Exactly, exactly, and they're oh. much sweeter like that as well. So you're gonna put in some peanut butter. Okay, I love it. And then, my oh, favorite, magic the magic ingredient, this. Soy milk is accessible, you can get it anywhere, that's why I love using soy milk. So I'm just gonna throw some of that in, just a cup of that. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> just a tad, <laughs> just a little. <laughs> I mean, you can work on the consistency that, that you like. The key word here is drink to double three seven two eight. You SMS that, we'll send you the full recipe, and, and the rest is, is yours. Um, and I really would recommend for for summer, get yourself a good blend, get yourself something like the the new It does make a big difference. Buzz away, go, buzz away. <laughs> I love, the, I love the pop of green there as How well. How gorgeous is that? So we're just gonna open this up. Yay, um, look at that. Serving time. It, it looks healthy, let's be honest. It, really, mean, it looks I mean like really. you're putting something really special. Um, beautiful stuff. Would you like to taste it? Can I, can I do the taste test? <laughs> because I know this, this is kind of new territory for me. Um, while I do that, are there any tips you would give to someone who is wanting to kind of go on the same journey that you've gone through, through veganuary? Yeah, I mean, I think do your research what's what important because I think a lot of people make the mistake when they go plant-based, how is it? Mm, that is beautiful. <laughs> and it's, it's a lot sweeter than I thought it would be. Yeah. It's really, really nice. Bananas. Mm. Bananas. It's delicious. And the swim mm. Good Hope has, like, really, really amazing swim milk. Yeah. But yes, I would say do your research because the mistake people make often is going plant-based and not replacing certain vitamins and nutrients that they were getting before. And then uh, they have a very, very miserable time and then... Without Done. realizing you know, it's because I've got no iron. Thing, I've got no so. iron, I'm anemic, it's just, but it's like you need to replace it with the best nutrients. And also you just do your best. Like if you do fall off, I mean, try with meatless Mondays, you know, try reduce any, your consumption of meat or just really just try your best. It, yeah, so. I mean, don't be hard on yourself at the end of the day. It's not like, <laughs> do it, do it, do it. But I just would say, yeah, I think that's, that's what I'd say really. Any advice from you, sure. Ms. Um, Street Blogger? encourage people to join you, encourage people to sign up with you. Yeah. Um, when I first went vegan, my sisters came after me. My dad is now mostly part of really? My mom is really supportive, so they've really like helped me. So definitely get a support going. And you don't only have to have smoothies in the morning. No, there's like <laughs> There's options. so many yeah. savory options. Fries has bangers, breakfast bangers, and 
There's a huge variety. It, I think the world is following on, is following suit, ladies. Thank you so much. You've opened my eyes this morning. Um, really healthful, uh, healthy and pops with flavor. And I think it's opening a whole new world. Everyone has a favorite smoothie. Um, and one of these might just be yours to get your hands on all three of these uh, smoothies, in fact, that we um, are going to be putting out to you. You can SMS the keyword drink to 33728. Each SMS is going to cost you just one rand 50. No free SMSs apply. And remember, if you want to take the pledge, which is a good starting point, you can visit Veganuary's website today. You'll find loads of great tips there as well, tricks and recipes uh, to get you started on your journey. I'm going to take ownership of this. I'm sorry. Slow me. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> mm. It's really nice. Meat. Cardamom. Flesh. She got this! Would you have a cord at the end? No. Oh, okay. because it is your very special day on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Uh, thank you for joining us, by the way. Mm -hmm. And of course, we love all the messages that have come through. Let's begin. Could Absolutely. It is the 15th of January. Yeah. And starting off is Isabel. It is not only your birthday, but also your first day of big school. Oh, we wish you only the best. Happy birthday to you, Angel. We love you so much from your mom, dad, and sister, Janika. Happy birthday to you, Isabel. Isabel. Ah, very beautiful name there, hey? Absolutely. Then, uh, yep, go ahead, please. Uh, Filda, happy 65th birthday to our sister, Filda Swartz. Lots of love from your sisters, Bertha, Ritha, and family. Happy birthday to you. Oh, look at Filda. She looks like a hoot, eh? She, <laughs> she could laugh at a joke. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. <laughs> then, uh, to my beautiful daughter, Minente, Minnie, the princess of Wakanda, right? on her sixth birthday and starting grade one. Happy birthday to you, Minnie. And this is from Joseph Molo. See, happy birthday over there. And then I wish our mom and grandmother, Sarah Heatley, a happy 77th birthday today. May you be blessed with many more years to come. And this is from all of your children and grandkids. We love you a lot, Ma. 
happy birthday to you and happy fifth birthday to Shanil. May God bless you and spare you many more years. Lots of love from your mama and dada. <laughs> happy 14th birthday to my son, Werner. May you have a blessed day. Good luck with your grade eight journey. Love, mom. Oh, it's back to school for him as well yeah. today. Yeah, wow. also wishing, wishing Simation a very happy 21st birthday. May God bless you with many wonderful and prosperous years ahead. Love from Tracy, Kaylee, Declan, and all of your family. Happy birthday there. And then wishing Acacia a very happy 13th birthday. May God bless you with many more years to come. We love you. And this is from your mum and dad and Nadine as well. Happy birthday, Acacia. Absolutely. If you guys would love to wish your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues a very happy birthday, make sure to send us those videos. We absolutely love them. We haven't seen them in a while, actually. Mm. You can send a WhatsApp to 071 640 or email your birthday wishes to birthdays at cordova.tv. Excellent. Happy birthday if it's your special day today. Okay, sweetie, time to blow out your candles. Don't ruin the moment. Prevent allergies or cold and flu with fast acting powder nasal spray from the Nexa range. Nexa. Brought to you by Pharma Dynamics. It is almost the top of the hour time to get back into those news and sporting headlines after which we're going to bring you an incredible performance. We've been treated to various soundtracks from the Cape Town Philharmonic Youth Orchestra. They are here to perform just for you in just a moment, so stay tuned. In the latest national news headlines, the Gauteng Education Department has reluctantly thrown a lifeline to parents of grade 1 and grade 8 pupils who were late with their applications for the 2020 school year. Education MEC Panyaza Sufi said online registration was reopened at midnight last night to give them another chance. In other news, President Cyril Ramaphosa says South Africa is embarking on a new trajectory of self-generation self of energy. He was addressing the second annual business economic Indaba in Santon. Moving over to international headlines this morning, the United States wishes to reduce its military presence in Africa. Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, said yesterday it wishes to focus more on responding to threats posed by Russia and China. Now, a tourist in Thailand has become the first person outside China diagnosed with a new pneumonia-like virus that has already infected dozens of people. One person has succumbed and 41 cases of the virus have been recorded so far. And finally, it's been referred to as the largest ever experiment as to what nature does when people leave. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986 in what was then the Soviet Republic or USSR horrified the world. Some 350,000 people had to be hastily evacuated 34 years ago from a large area in what is known as Belarus today, as well as from land which is presently part of Ukraine. Now, and Chernobyl has since become a wildlife sanctuary. Animals have, re have found refuge there and most encouragingly have increased in numbers from rare Chevalsky horses and European brown bears to grey wolves and red foxes that had all disappeared prior to the accident have now returned. There is indeed hope for this scarred planet of ours that we call home and on that positive note let's take a look at the latest sporting headlines. Thanks so much, Kat. We kick it off with some interesting news on the cricketing front after hitting 40 from 32 deliveries in his debut for the Brisbane Heat in the Big Bash League in Australia. Our former Proteus star, A.B. de Villiers, has now stated he would love to return to the South African national team. And staying with cricket, Aaron Finch and David Warner, they led Australia to a 10-wicket win over India. That was in the first one-day international in Mumbai. On to rugby, the junior Springboks will face England, Fiji and hosts Italy in a pretty tough pool C of the 2020 World Rugby Under-20 Championships that will be taking place across four Italian cities in the middle of the year. On to some football news. Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur. They've advanced to the FA Cup fourth round after beating Middlesbrough 2-1 in a replay of their third round fixture at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last night. And staying with football news, defending La Liga champions Barcelona, they have sacked their head coach Ernesto Valverde and announced that former Real Betis coach Kiki Setin will now take charge of the very successful Spanish Giants. We'll expand on those headlines as we progress this morning.
the time is now the time is now three minutes past seven rather, and it's the f time to have the first look at what's happening on the roads this morning. Starting off in Umkomaz in KwaZulu Natal, there is protest action on the N2 northbound before the Umkomaz River. The road is closed in both directions, so please use an alternative route this morning. And in Benoni Gauteng on the N12 westbound, there is a stationary vehicle off the Tom Jones Street obstructing the left lane. Please approach with caution. And in the Metro Rail Northern Line, there is an extended travel time of 30 to 40 minutes on the Strand Maltus Flay line due to current infrastructure conditions set out of service and a defective set. That's it for the traffic update. Now it's time for the weather. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning in the Mother City. Uh, it's time to have the first look, well, the second look at your weather this morning. We've asked you to send in your sunrise pictures. Sam Cross sent us this amazing sunrise from Durban, where sunny conditions can be expected with beautiful temperatures reaching a maximum of 30 degrees. And Fatha Khan sent us this sunrise from Rotters Bay, where times of clouds and sunshine can be seen with warmer temperatures than the day before, reaching a maximum of 31 degrees. Thank you so much for those pictures. We absolutely love uh, seeing your pictures. Make sure to keep them going and flowing on our social media. In Polokwane, expect temperatures ranging from 15, reaching a high of 28. Bombela, 18, 29. Pretoria peaks at a 30 today with a low of 17. And the lowest temperature in the country is Johannesburg with a low of 15, reaching a high of 28. Mahi Geng, 18, 31. And same as Clagstop with a low of 18, reaching a high of 31. Kimberley, 20, 37. And Clear Sky from Bloemfontein with a minimum of 16 degrees reaching a maximum of 33 degrees. Rutgers Bay 21 at 31. Peter Maritzburg 1830 and north easterly wind uh, of 15 kilometers an hour in Durban with a low of 22 degrees reaching a high of 30 degrees. In Tata 17 peaking at 34 today. High humidity for East London with a high of 30 degrees and a low of 22. And plenty of sunshine for Credoc at a high of 38 degrees with a low of 18. At Port Elizabeth, temperatures go from 21 degrees, reaching a high of 28 degrees. And high humidity for George at 20, 26. Sutherland is a sunny day with a maximum of 37 degrees with a low of 19. And south easterly wind of 28 kilometers an hour in Cape Town with a low of 21, reaching a high of 27. Wooster with a max of 39 degrees and a low of 18 degrees. And Springbok, a maximum of 38 and a minimum of 21. And the highest temperature in the country goes to Uppington if you are in Uppington, expect a peak of 41 degrees and a low of 26. Generally, it seems like a very beautiful, warm day in South Africa today. Make sure to stay hydrated, get the sunblocks out and try to remain cool and have yourselves an absolutely amazing day. Well, in case you're not having such a wonderful day, it's about to turn into a beautiful one as we enjoy music from, ah, oh man, an incredibly talented young man, Jordan Brooks over here. He's part of the Cape Town Philharmonic Youth Orchestra uh, alongside accompanist Tasha Fisser to play us into a beautiful morning with a song called Banjo and Fiddle.
bravo. Beautiful stuff, Jordan. Well Thank done. You. And of course, Jordan is a member of the Cape Town Philharmonic Youth Orchestra, and you can catch them at the International Summer Music Festival that kicks off tomorrow until the 12th of January of February this, uh, or at the City Hall. And I understand that you recently won a national competition as well? Yes, the National Youth Music Competition. That's incredible. Well, what are some of your big aspirations and dreams for your, your music career? Well, uh, I plan on studying overseas, yeah. um, find a job in the orchestra and everything, and then I'll come back and teach everything that I learned overseas wow. to everyone else. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, you're off to a great start. And thank you very much for starting our morning on such a beautiful note. I hope you enjoyed that. Link up with us on our Expresso Morning Show SABC3 Facebook page and let us know what you thought about that performance of banjo and fiddle. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Apply for your American Express Gold or Platinum card and get 20% off your food bill or a complimentary appetizer or a free bottle of wine every time you use your card at participating taste restaurants around the country. Apply now at AmericanExpress.co.za. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show on this Wednesday, the 15th of January 2020. And uh, right now, time for us to speak about the latest movies that you can expect to see on the silver screen this year. And of course, who better than J.P. Sebastian to give us the lowdown on some of the, uh, the trailers that he's been watching. Good to have you, sir. Hey, Kat. Lacquer Man. I've, I've, <laughs> the first one that we're checking out has no uh, South African release date yet, uh -huh. uh, but a title that I've been wanting to say to you for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> say it. No. Come to daddy. <laughs> I should get paid more. This is um, <laughs> I, I'm sure, Kat, that you've been wondering where Frodo's been this whole time. The, well, clearly he's been working on his uh, skills with the fort. I'm sure that he's just brying and that is What just on earth is going on? Meat sauces in the poster. Elijah just Wood. Just barbecuing. Elijah Wood, we miss him so much, right? Um, yeah. I, I do. I think he was very good, of course. We all love Frodo. Remember when he did something scary afterwards? It was Sin City. He was, was, it, oh. he was Kevin, the creepy cannibal dude. Yeah. So here's the thing about Elijah Wood is most people don't know that he's a bit of a perv for horror. Like that's his niche. That's the thing he likes. Okay. Do you remember back in the day it was The Faculty that he starred in? Anyway, I don't think I've ever seen that. Watch that. He's like a teeny like kid and he was still lots of fun in, in a slasher type horror. I think the that was West The definitely works for the creepy effect. Um, I, he, he's not even the, cre the creep in this uh, it seems which is weird. Given his haircut that you're looking Yo. at there. Oh. <laughs> Some, someone is allowing that person into their house as we speak. He is the son in this movie to this estranged father you're looking at there. Oh, reconciled. Everything's going to be fine. Come to daddy. Welcome back. Come to daddy. Uh, oh, that's where the movie title... Do you ever do that when you watch movies and then they drop the movie 
title somewhere in the script. You're like, movie title! I'm I do so, that all the time. I'm so disappointed when that happens. Like, if ever someone turned to camera and went, I guess that's why they call it The Matrix. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no, no, yeah. that's poor. But obviously, like, this is clearly supposed to be a pulpy type horror thing. It's not necessarily engaging all your synapses necessarily. Um, it's just supposed to be horror where this dude, he's Elijah Wood's mother, recently passes away. Yeah. She tells him that he's father, she knows where he is, and he's this dude that you've not seen in years. Clearly is a creep, just chucked a rock at the kid there. <laughs> why, why are you still hanging around? What, why are you still inquisitive to learn about who your father is if he just playfully lobbed a rock at you in a lake? Anyway, uh, it's, it's supposed to be like one of these paranoid, you know, shut-in type horrors, yeah. cabin fever type things. And also, does Elijah Wood eventually learn, wait, we've got way too much in common. I'm a, oh crazed, my word. I'm a crazed murderer too. I'm sure it's going to be lots of fun. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy for this guy, although I suppose he's a millionaire, so who cares? But like, for these residuals after The Lord of the Rings, he just gets to do what he wants. So he started a production company where he wow. supports small movie makers like this. Yeah. Uh, last movie was worth, uh, really critically acclaimed, uh, A Gold Walks Home Alone at Night uh, oh, wow. by an American-Iranian uh, lady. Uh, and so he goes to find like young talent and pulls them in and gives them money and supports them. So really gets to stretch his creative... Um... Because of the Frodo money, because the Shire pays off dearly. Um, <laughs> so for the rest of his life, good for him, I think he gets to do precisely that. what he wants. He doesn't have to do a superhero movie like some people. I feel like Drake is going to drop that line one day, I got that Frodo money. Anyway, uh, 31st of July, you can expect to see Morbius. Do we want to, though? D oh, wow, do we not? This is... Uh, wait, that's... Uh, Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. Shame, who surely is like... No, the Oscar should be mine at this point because Joaquin Phoenix, obviously. The, the Joker from Suicide Squad, I think, is like a distant memory for people. Um, yeah. The, if you look at all the memes, it's like Heath Ledger, uh, Jack Nicholson, and Joaquin Phoenix, and poor Jared Leto. He doesn't, he doesn't make the cut. Left out in the cold. Um, but is back in superhero movies with a character called Morbius. Who knows Morbius here? Hands up. No one on set. Oh, no. I, uh, no, Who no. and what is Morbius? Um, Morbius is this guy he who is in convents. the Spider-Man universe. Um, he is a villain. Uh, or, or like an anti-villain. He's okay. a guy who's complicated in a way. A scientist has a rare blood disorder that is gradually killing him. Uh, you can see his life is very difficult. And Jared Leto is in his scientific research uh, finding or approaching a way to cure himself which involves transfusing something got to do with bats. I'm not a biologist, I don't care. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> so, like, it's not bat bat exactly, but he, he, he mixes his own genetics with a vampire bat. Please, no movie, just because he's using bat blood doesn't mean a scientist has to pull out of a drawer, like out of a cubby hole, a whole bat. That's not the way science works. But anyway, trailer moves on. So he goes to find this very rare bat with this genetic strain that helps him deal with his blood disorder. Surprise, surprise, when you mix spider blood and bat blood into yourself, you become Spider-Man, or in this case, you become M bat Mobius man um, but <laughs> Jared Leto, I'm sorry, this trailer looks there really, wow. really, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not over the mood about this necessarily, but it's a teaser trailer. We don't know this far in advance what the movie's going to be like. It's still July for South Africa, as far as I know. But uh, this is definitely not selling me. I was laughing all the way wow. through. D d like, don't, don't give me a trailer that describes the story down to like the, oh, can't people make teasers anymore where you're just like, enticed, just like, mm, give me that one morsel of what the movie's like. Wow. But they tell you the whole story here, which ain't a sin. I'm sure people like these effects that they're looking at and whatever. Jared Leto is really uh, one of these actors who I have such a love-hate relationship with because he is good, even if he is a weirdo off camera. Sorry, Jared. Uh, deeply obvious. hate your movie. But on another <laughs> note, uh, apparently I read an article the other day that Equatorial uh, Guinea bat guanu uh, contains a protein that could reverse uh, the process of aging. Did you know that? Of course. Cat. I mean, this is like talk of the town. I'm talking ha absolute, hash I'm talking absolute ac guano. Ac I don't equ believe that. Equatorial bat guinea it's done. guano. It's done. I'm sorry. Cat. <laughs> I was fooled because he's so Let's convincing. Get to the kitchen already. This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> don't make guano. <clears throat> I, I am finding it difficult to concentrate because I'm thinking about bats, you know, <laughs> genetic transformations and things like that. Now, I'm having a lot of fun preparing my mince here. Yes. Um, Kutla and I are going to be making a classic, a South African favourite, a staple in many kitchens, something mm. that I've actually never made before, believe I've it or not. I've never even really? tasted it before, so... Never, well, of course you haven't. Of course you haven't. Don't even try me, OK? <laughs> Don't even try me. As Graham said, we are making South African favourite for Borti. And to kick things off, we are using the Clover Butra oil, a delicious sunflower and butter oil blend. So if mm. you've never made Boboti like myself, don't sweat it because Graham is going to school us today. Yeah, man, it's actually really simple. So we've got our butter, a blend of sunflower and butter oil. I'm going to add a little bit more here just to um, 
help the cooking process. What I like about this, yeah. um, 180 day shelf life, you don't have to refrigerate it, which is great. That's um, pretty but very, cool. very handy for a number of different, there we go, got a nice little fry. And I love the, the fact that it's a blend of oil and butter mm. as well, you know what I mean? It's going to add a whole lot of uh, flavor to depth, mm. and that's what we are all about with creating a babuti here. So what I've done is I've fried up um, our mints yes. and our onions to start. Okay, um, it's been going for a little while here. Now we're going to start infusing the flavors, and these are typical babuti flavors. Mm. Okay, so this is the cornerstone of babuti, is you need a curry um, vibe. It's, it's very much like, or you can see from the finished product, the finished product. curry um, is the base flavor in the mince. So we've got our masala, mm -hmm. we've got turmeric, we've got uh, garlic powder, and I'm going to toss in a bay leaf there I as well. I love how the spices are so rich in mm. color and also just rich in taste. Just wait, when you get this combination of that curry flavor, um, the savory, and as you'll see, the sweet, and you, this is a good phase to add the, the spices in, so it really does cook into... Um, the meat you want that. Look at the, just the, the color oh, popping apart from anything else. The entire look of the is mix. like, honestly, don't get it on yourself because it's like a, a dye. Is it going to mm. stain my nails? Um, it will stain anything and everything. Just a, a pinch of, of salt, a, mm -hmm. pinch, a pinch of salt and some black pepper for, for <laughs> flavoring. Um, and now we're going to introduce sweet elements, which is really, okay. really cool. So I've got, believe it or not, apricot jam. 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 When would you typically make boboti? Um, it's like a great dinner time treat, but it's, I mean, it's such a South African favorite. Mm -hmm. um, make it for a good lunch. There we go. A bit of chutney going in there as well. Um, it's also delicious cold, believe yeah. it or not. Um, and some Worcester sauce. Yeah. We're going to add that. Just a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. Now make sure if you want to get mm. your hands on this um, recipe, make sure to SMS the keyword clover. Um, and Oh, mama. Oh, that looks delicious. Yeah, it's coming across nicely. You want all of that, the jam and everything to infuse because you want that savory and sweet kind of balance. Yes. Um, then I've got some lentils that we have prepared already. Okay. Um, just going to boost it up. And How great. do you prepare your lentils? Um, I'm actually, to be quite honest, um, you can boil them. You can soak them first to start yeah. removing the, um, the starch mm -hmm. um, and then cook them lightly. They're obviously going to carry on cooking here, but you don't want your lentils to be too hard. Um, they you know, very much like a rice. They carry a lot of starch in them. Yeah. So soaking them beforehand um, helps to remove some of that and then boil them and box your uncle. But you can buy already cooked, prepared lentils oh, uh, tinned like as well, which is really simple. If you're um, lazy. Beautiful stuff. And then the last addition to our mince mix, sultanas. Um, that's going to add another kind of element of sweetness. Um, it's going to absorb the moisture as well. Um, and that's the base of our baburti. How then, awesome. Grandma, that actually looks tasty enough. For? So this, um, I suppose you varied. If you wanted to undercook this slightly and let it all infuse together, yeah. you could put it all straight in and cook it for slightly longer in the oven. But yeah. most of the mince is, is, you know, it's cooked through. All of the elements are cooked yeah. through here. Okay. So it's now more about the flavor infusing and finishing it off in your Everything. kind of with your little topping that you've got going there. So what I'm going to do now, I think that looks perfect. All of the flavors have definitely infused. Oh, the spices delicious. look amazing. So and I'm going to pop what this. What do you do then with the egg and the milk? All right, just... so very, very simple egg custard. All you're going to do mm -hmm. is whisk in that egg, as I'm sure you have figured out. Woo! Whisk yep. it into the milk and get it nicely mixed through if you can. Yeah. I'm going to put that as nice and even if as If you want to get your hands on the recipe, make sure to SMS the keyword clover to 33728 and you can get, you know, the recipe that Graham used to make it for board tea. Mm. Also remember that it's each really SMS simple. costs 150 and there are no free SMSs that apply, unfortunately. So get on SMSing. So you're going to let me know when this is ready. I mean, as long as it's nicely mixed through, you don't want like kind of a funny scrambled egg version there. But that's yeah. basically, you've just made yourself an egg custard. And that's going to form on the top of our baburti. Um, so now we're going to pour this over the top. OK. Um, and dun, 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 Yay. Ooh. Ooh, and then we put it in stuff. the oven, oven preheat, for about, uh, 180 minutes. degrees, yeah. 15 minutes. I'll just pop two of those on because it looks really awesome. While we finish off here, let's take a recap of how to make yourself a bobo tea. And that it goes in pretty. the oven. Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. Tuck into a South African favorite at dinner time tonight. This quick, easy, and delicious baburti from Clover. Add two tablespoons of Clover Batro oil to a large pan, followed by two finely chopped onions, two bay leaves, 
one tablespoon of minced garlic, two tablespoons of curry powder, one teaspoon of turmeric, and saute until the onions are soft and fragrant. Next, stir through 500 grams of beef mince and cook for 15 minutes. Add one tablespoon of Worcester sauce, two tablespoons of chutney, one tablespoon of apricot jam, then season to taste and stir to combine. Once everything is combined, add one tin of drained lentils, half a cup of sultanas, stir again, then spoon the mince mixture into a baking dish and set aside. In a bowl, whisk together two eggs and a cup of clover full cream fresh milk. Before pouring the egg over the babuati mince, pop the dish into the oven and bake at 180 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes. Serve with yellow rice and a salad on the side. Packed with sweet curry flavors, this quintessential South African favorite is a must-have recipe for your dinner table. Made with love by Clover. And it really is as simple as that. As you get a little taste test out there, look how beautiful. You can see the cross section Ooh. there. Um, our beautiful egg custard. Some of it's infused with the mince, and then you get this beautiful layer on top. It looks amazing. In fact, I think we need to call in a bird, a bird to come <laughs> taste our babuati. You can be, you can be our babuati bird. May I? Please yes, do. Go for it. Quite impressive um, the presentation, guys. Mm. Um, it's it's actually so easy to make, dude. It really it is good. easy, and I think what should hopefully Come stand on, out here is the balance of beautiful curry flavors. Yeah. A nice masala went in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but also what did the, you made yourself? The, right? the, yeah, yeah, of course, from from sauce, man. I went to I mean, India and sourced the ingredients. With my help, of course, Graham. Uh, and hey. nice. Um, Kutle was, was mm. key to the success. I of was this very. She was key. I'm gonna. I was an important part of this mission. Of this operation. Oh, yummy, eh? Really liking that. Sweet, salty, beautiful. Well, well done to you. Mm. So the keyword here is a clover. You SMS clover to double three seven two eight, and we'll send you this ingredients list, and I'll spit the food all over the table. <laughs> <laughs> Clover Fresh Milk is the number one milk brand in SA. Made with love by Clover. It's right. good, huh? That's mm. really, really Delicious. good. Delicious. I'm very, very impressed. Okay, listen, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, of course, today, a very important day in the lives of so many Yay, young ones. It's yeah. the first day of school, and so we'll be crossing live to Camps Bay Primary. That's where Jamie Lee is right now. And of course, we'd love to... Hey, Jamie Lee, there she is. Hey, girl. Hi, Jamie. We'd love for you guys to please send us some <laughs> pictures uh, of your first day at school. If you have one from many, many years ago, share some memories with us. Please. If you're gonna be out and about taking your little ones to school, take a picture, share it with us on Espresso Morning Show, SABC3. We'll see you after a short break. Clover Crush, 100% pure fruit juice packed with vitamins and no added sugar. Crush, your daily goodness. Now also available in long life. Support Crush in giving away another 20,000 pairs of school shoes to children in need. Buy a Crush, dial the number on the pack and stand the chance to win your share of 500,000 rand. Hashtag share the goodness. Made with love by Clover. It's my feel-good 
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Uh, yeah, I might have come in hot there. <laughs> I was quite excited to see that you're back with us <laughs> on this Wednesday morning, the start of a brand new day. Uh, we appreciate you being uh, here with us, especially because uh, possibly you might be getting ready for the first day of school. Yeah, yeah. maybe you're feeling a little emotional. Yeah. Mm. I'm thinking of us emotionally holding your hand right now as you prepare for a very special moment that we're about to share with some gorgeous, great ones. <laughs> so much, Uncle Tabsy. Now, today is super emotional day for a lot of parents and kids as they start this new journey as a grade one student. Now, today I'm at Camps Bay Prep Primary School. We will find out how the parents and kids are feeling ahead of this beautiful day that today I have with me, Ellen. And so, Lange, yeah. Ellen, as a parent, how are you feeling? It's the first day. Did you ever think she'd grow up to see this day? No. I never thought that, you know. I'm so excited. At the same time, I was a little bit nervous, you know, and I didn't expect that this day would come at last anyway. It's something that comes as a blink, you know. Absolutely. She's yeah. super, super gorgeous. How do you prepare for this? Like mentally, emotionally, physically, how did you prepare Solange for this day like today? For the first time, you know, last, last night I've asked her to go to sleep early without even a problem because she knew this day, it's, it's, it's her day anyway. She, she, yeah. It's definitely her day. Are you excited, little one? Yes. you super excited. What are you looking forward to, to today? Mm. What a you? happy face. Yeah, happy face. Can you show the camera your happy face? Yay, L look at that happy face. And now, Mommy, just in final, in closing, if there's any words of encouragement for parents starting this day today, that's super nervous yeah. out there. They're watching now, wanting to know, like, what is that words of encouragement you have for them today? Exactly. It's, it's, not, an, it, the end, it's not the end of the world, you know. It's the beginning, and then everything just happens in one go anyway. I love that, Ellen and Solange. Thank you so much for joining us. Like you heard Ellen say, it's the beginning of a brand new journey. So all the parents and the kids out there starting grid one and this new bright future, good luck to all of you. Back to you guys in studio. See you later. Oh, she's How so cute, cute are they? First of all, she's, she's mm, 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 Jamie mm, Lee Domberg. Wait, Uncle do you Tubsy see an Uncle what? Tubsy Uncle here? Tubsy for what? Mama Tubsy. Oh, shade. <laughs> yeah, man. She's on the other side of the world. Life crossings. Um, so cute, man. But they really are very she, cute. She, she seems ready. Man. Yeah, she's she's out there. She's, she's like, she's like she's got a happy face on. Mm. Very, very How do you do that? Do you, do you have to coach your, your children into that moment, like a week before, tell them, like, next week, Monday, we're going to school? school. Get them excited. Because some, I think some it's of them a, are teary. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be very different for, for every child. I yeah. Mean, you got some that are going to love that. They're going to love the ball that they're going to love, especially the new stationery mm. and the new school yeah. uniform and all yeah. those things. Um, I would imagine more, more girls than boys. I think boys generally, it's it's the social element, I think, of being yeah. able to just go and unleash yourself. New friends. New friends. <laughs> ah, Class has even started and your shirt is dirty. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Very anyway, sweet. Well, let's talk about, uh, of course, parenthood and parenting a child with ADHD, which can be challenging if you're not well equipped and knowledgeable on how to help your child handle the condition. Now, to help spread awareness, Professor Renata Skuman, a psychiatrist in Cape Town, has come together with author Rifile Mwathudi and, and illustrator David Chrysal to create a colorful children's book about the adventures of a child with ADHD. Brilliant. Education is so important, firstly to give people hope and secondly to give people skills to be able to create a better future for themselves and so often we find that if children do not have a good foundation in terms of education they end up not completing their school and if you do not complete your education your job prospects later is so much less. To help children understand their diagnosis and how to cope with it, Professor Skuman and Rafiulo Moatudi wrote the book, All of These Things Are Important to Me. So the first part of the book is telling the story of Z, our young protagonist, which is a girl with ADHD and all her adventures during the day, from getting ready from school, being in trouble, using public transport, but also really highlighting her strengths, her honesty, her energy, her humour, and to bring her alive and so that children can associate with her. 
The purpose of the book is really to create awareness for ADHD, but also to remove stigma in the community. There's so many communities, especially in the underprivileged areas, which do not have access to mental health services and do not understand perhaps what is ADHD, where kids are then labeled as lazy, naughty, or just plain stupid. So we wrote this book and the idea is then that a teacher or parent or any healthcare provider reads the story with the child and then also is empowered with the academic content at the back of the book to answer questions the child might have, but also to empower yourself as an adult working with the child. Written in five South African languages, the story is sensitively brought to life through the illustrations of David Gressel. Illustrating this book, I really um, focused on simplification. Um, the text was written in the form of a poem, so it was quite difficult to turn into a visual narrative. And the only way I could really do it is by taking the text and simplifying it as much as possible and just focusing on the core moments of the poem. The art style I chose for this book is based on my personal work as well. Um, I often work in a fantastical and imaginary style. Um, with this one I wanted to keep it quite simple, um, keep the lines loose and childlike to kind of evoke that sense of wonder and imagination. So some of the challenges that a child or an adult with ADHD faces include academic or occupational difficulties. So if we talk about academic difficulties, they might be struggling in a big classroom where there's a lot of distractions. So the other thing is they often drift off in classrooms and they're not necessarily naughty or talkative and they are just quietly disappearing in the cracks and they miss out on this learning opportunities. And then they're often difficulty with reading and writing as well and then can be labeled as, as maybe not a child with a lot of potential. Regarding to the style the book was done in, um, it's all in black and white but with the specific parts of it is yellow and the yellow is symbolic of the character's ADHD and we wanted to make the color positive and happy because to show that the normal world, normal in quotation marks, is black and white while um, Z, which is the main character, is different and actually different in a positive way. So in that way it's quite a simple but effective way to symbolize the positivity behind her um, mental condition. So originally when we wrote the book we thought it's for primary school kids, that was our original positioning, but we had tremendous feedback from teenagers, students, young adults that's buying this book and say but now for the first time they really can associate with the character and they can really explain to their friends. So this book has a broader readership than only primary school. Proceeds from the book are donated to a foundation for early detection of mental health issues among children in underprivileged areas. A wonderful initiative indeed. Wow, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Yeah. Now, when we come back from a short break, we'll be talking more movies with JP Sebastian, some of the ones that we can be expecting on the silver screen for 2020. Uh, are you more excited for the second round? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna be showing you some smaller ones. Uh, I, everyone loves the big asteroids attacking yeah. and the big Thanos and all that kind of stuff, lots of fun. Okay. But I love to draw attention to just the teeny tiny little indie movies once in a while yeah. too. Uh, so, Princess, are, are you a you know? movie lover? Do you love movies? Yes. Yeah? Who's, your, who's your favorite uh, actor or actress? Um, it's Leon Schuster. Leon Schuster? Yes. He's a funny man. Wow. What's your favorite movie of Leon Schuster? I, I hope you yes. say the same word. No, come on. <laughs> I, I, I was hoping you'd cameras. say like, what's that panic mechanic that was really good? I still, I still laugh my eyes out at that. No, you're not a fan? It's no. cr crickets, even in my own head. Wow, you've never seen it? No, I've seen Panic Mechanic. I've, I've, I've suffered it all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Shame on you, said Princess, please. <laughs> ah, my latest cup, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> With a little bit of uh, a spring. A, yeah, hazelnut. That's hazelnut. how I like it. Thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break enough. while JP just counsels himself over the fact that he didn't like Panic Mechanic. I can't believe you. I, I don't have enough love in my life. More sugar. Tons I can't of sugar, believe please. You. That's what, my what's problem. wrong with you? And those who have tried it. McAfe, great coffee, simple. See you after the break. Just relax, it's 
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is a Wednesday morning, midway through the week. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. We're talking movies with JP Sebastian. Some of the latest trailers that he's checked out of movies you can expect on the silver screen in 2020. Uh, with no South African release date yet, the first that we are tackling now is a movie called The First Cow. This is the most epic poster. Look at that. Yes. If, what on if, if, if any movie has the, the three uh, symbols A24 on it, yes. and it was just two hours of a cow floating down river on a raft, you'd be like, ah, oh, yes, art, art. Because <laughs> A24 yeah. is the studio that just made The Farewell, which you might have heard some hype about, Lulu yeah. Wang, Aquafina won uh -huh. the Golden Globe for it, uh -huh. just made Uncut Gems, which is the movie that people feel reinvented. Adam Sandler should have gotten an Oscar nomination for it, a lot uh -huh. of people feel. Uh, A24 made The Lighthouse with Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Okay. They are unbeatable, man. Because wow. they're, they're, they're gigantic studios like the Warner Brothers is, is, uh, and your Universal is, 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 and Sony's and whoever else is. is, is. But A24 is this <laughs> teeny little New York studio that is knocking it out the park. Moonlight, uh, for example. Wow. Okay. And so first, you just drop that first. I'm I sorry. Uh, okay. But let's talk first about cows, why not? The true story of the first cow president of the United States. No, a lie, completely. What is it? I don't it know. Took... It's beautiful to look at. That's what all that counts. What did the counts. first cow do? And uh, why the is first cow is, this guy that you're looking at here is a cook, and he's a bit of a wanderer back in the frontier days. I suppose that's at least for settlers, because America was settled already, of the United States, where he uh, has access to a landowner's cow, and there he's making little, I think those are Yorkshire puddings. Oh. So in this horrible, dirty, grimy, uh, miserable, time of life for for a lot of people he is able to express himself creatively he has with him a uh, Chinese immigrant friend who is sort of uh, he's, he's he's cheerleader under these difficult times they come up with this business idea together did he steal the, the, the Asian guys recipes um, hey, hey this this is always a question using his railroads as well um, mm. <laughs> let's not talk old history the, well actually it's not all old, old history it's very relevant but first cow it looks like one of these things that's gonna be so sort of like Moody, like wow. just, just. Oh wow! I see what you did there. Atmosphere. Moody. <laughs> wow. I'm going to be honest, South Africa. I didn't even yeah. notice that. That was brilliant. That's that. class. I'm class. the worst. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So first cow, yeah, uh, uh, totally atmospheric. A24. I trust anything that they do. And a Western movie that doesn't involve, say, Leonardo DiCaprio getting eaten by a bear. Yeah. A lot more serene and sedentary. I'm all here for it. Sometimes. Cool stuff. Uh, on the other hand, um, <laughs> the next movie, also with no South African release date. Uh, True history of the Kelly Gang. Uh, so this is, uh, on the other hand, moving all the way to Down Under. Uh, the, oh yeah. Uh, Kelly, uh, the, the Kelly Gang were a uh, force to be reckoned with in Australia's again when the settlers were trying to find themselves there. Uh, they were 
bandits. They were rebels. They were actually considered like an invading army by the, mm. the, the established police back then. Mm. And this is because uh, the gang is so much of a mythical feature of Australian life. Uh, there were these villains who became anti-heroes, who for a lot of people became freedom-fighting heroes of their own, people trying to carve out their own destiny on uh, a continent that was to them inhospitable because a lot of them went there obviously as convicts, mm -hmm. you know, desperately poor dudes from uh, the British Isles. So, uh, Russell Crowe, yay. Oh, look at there we go. Always nice to see his face. He's a very intense dude. He's going to make it to the Golden Globes. Um, George McKay, um, oh yeah, Russell was, no, no, he no. Was, he was still back home. Yeah, 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 that's right. He gave a message, shame, for Australia and the time that's going through right now with those fires. Uh, George McKay is the guy who you're going to see in 1917 and I promise you, you have to go see this Friday. Uh, and he's leading you as, as the, the, the leader of the pack, who I'm carefully just saying Kelly Gang all the time because I can't remember the guy's first name. I'm, I'm an idiot, I'm sorry. Tell you what, let's but, move it on to the next one, shall we? Uh, very impressive looking true story on the other hand. Next we, one. Yeah, this is the last one that we have. Uh, Gretel and Hansel. Uh, initially, I thought that they, um, they, did, did they swap the names around? Is, uh, is this supposed maybe, to be Hansel maybe, and Gretel? Maybe it's Woke. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not trying to mock that either. Yeah. Maybe, uh, they, they put the girl in the spotlight here. Oh, lovely. Uh, okay. And Gretel and Hansel is, don't worry, folks, I've sanitized this. As you can see, it's a horror you're about to see, <laughs> but I've taken all the creepy stuff out of the video. Um, the poster for me is great and creepy enough because you've got this gnarled and unnatural, well, natural environment in the background, and then this that just... says feed. I just saw that. The trees spell feed. What? How do you see these things? What you is wrong it? with you? It's in the poster. Guys, guys had coffee, and I feel like... Fasani Slapia. 100% Arabic. Uh, thank you. And that is the young lady from It, uh, who is leading the, uh, the, the movie here. Um, find a name for me while I uh, talk about the rest of it. Uh, yes, has... exactly. Sophia oh. Lil Lilies. Lilies? Uh, yes, yes, that's yes. right. Um, she uh, obviously uh, has uh, enough experience in the horror genre. This one is a lot more small and teeny compared to It, obviously. Based on the folktale, or it was a Brothers Grimm thing, I think, okay. Hansel and Gretel, uh, which is about the young kids who find the cottage and the witch has these little puddings and pies and it's a little teeny quite uh, inviting Mac Cafe in the forest and it's obviously a trap. So uh, cool. she, uh, Gretel in this one, it looks uh, like they've taken a turn here where the, the daughter is almost being, or the young lady is being groomed possibly to become a witch herself. Okay. Uh, the brother on the other hand looks like he's been prepared. Oh my goodness, you just took yeah. off a piece of her, his hair and just, smelted. Okay, I'm creeped out enough. I'm creeped out enough. This is on February 21st, Gretel and Hansel, uh, director Oz Perkins. Look at the you yeah, see it? Wow. There it is. It says feed. It, Guys, cat needs to be, I don't know, a shark spotter or something like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we know that he'd not be necessarily brave enough to stick around and fight the shark, but feed he noticed. I wouldn't be that That's deep very in the water anyway. Yeah. Uh, Nicely done, JP Sebastian. Much Thank appreciated. You much. I am reading uh, my nervous system for that. Those are some of the movies you can expect to see on the silver screen this year. Um, now that we are all completely freaked out, let's bring in the happy juice again and those gorgeous happy faces. Time now to reconnect with our grade one learners who are going to take that brave first step into a new world of big school. Jamie Lee is standing by right now at Camps Bay Primary to connect us with some very proud parents. Well, if you're just joining us, I'm crossing to you live from Camps Bay Prep Primary School where the class of 2032, yes, but grade ones of 2022 is joining their first day at school. Now I have Wendy and Mila with me today. Wendy, how are you feeling? Do you have any advice for Mila as her first day starts today? Um, we're very, very excited and obviously a little bit nervous. So I think for the first day, all we've said to her is just enjoy it. Just have fun and get to know everything that's happening, not to take it too seriously as well. Yeah. I love it. Have lots of fun. Mila, are you going to have lots of fun today? Yes. Yes. What are you looking forward to, to do today? Reading. Reading? Oh, wow. Are you like a super cool reader? Yes. Yeah? And mommy, what did you pack in the lunchbox today so that she can be like alert for the reading today? Well, we've tried to put everything quite healthy. I think all the moms do that on the first day to try and make sure it's healthy, a sandwich, some fruit, some berries, and maybe even a little note just to say it's going to be okay and we're thinking of her. I'm so super emotional right now but we have one taking for the dad the dad team yeah. david i know you're very excited you've been here since like 7 15 already this morning <laughs> david the holidays were long yeah. the, the holidays are lying for the dads out there that is like looking for motivation to bring the child to school this morning what advice do you have for them uh 
uh, yeah, great question. Um, uh, no advice. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Get your kids to school, dads. The holidays were long, and they're excited to be here. So, are you excited? Because now you you'll you'll drop them off and you go back to work. How are you feeling? You can cry. It's okay to cry, Dad. It's so okay. Dad's taken 200 photographs. It's the first time I've seen my little girl as a big girl. I'm feeling very emotional, um, but I'll hide it. So don't worry. you can hide it. Don't worry. Now I know Jack. So you super excited she might actually steal my job Jax how are you feeling are you like so excited like Mila for your first day of school and my favorite thing for school today is singing we have a singer in the house everybody now Jax no pressure can you do a little song for all the great ones that's starting and is a bit nervous so a little song would you be able to do that for me I know it's just the first day you're gonna learn it's only gonna be signing we are about to step into the first grade of 2020 very excited very nervous for a lot of the parents but we are looking forward to the new class of 2032 that's Aww. incredible it's gonna be all right okay. okay. it's gonna be the best day, day. was she like right. freestyling there was that like I don't know was that from Frozen like or something it no, sounds it, like it's from Frozen it sounds like it's an original <laughs> to me it's something wow. that she Jax, prepared for you're today you're a superstar you're a superstar imagine young one lady. day she wins like a Grammy and, and like, we were there we were, we were the there oh. Oh. Oh, but good luck That's I think amazing. the parents looked a little bit nervous yeah Yeah. more nervous than the kids to be quite honest there so good luck parents good luck Kute do you remember your first day at school that was like yesterday I had, excuse me, sir, okay, <laughs> in my 23 yes, years of life. <laughs> yes, no, what are some of your school memories? Um, okay, the, I went to three different primary schools. The first one wow. was where my mom used to teach. It was very nice because I was in the comfort of my uh, familiar yeah, surroundings, yeah, you know what sure. I mean? But the second one, she just reminded me now. She's like, you're embarrassed because you used to follow your brother around everywhere he oh, went. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is he so older that, than you? He's older than me. Yeah, I had the same with the, wow. an older sister, and it actually did make a big difference, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Like just someone to, yeah? Exactly. Beautiful memories indeed. Mm. Please do share some of those uh, with us if you have any old pictures. We'd love to see them. Some Jeez. stories from your first day back at school. Uh, send them to us on Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. That's where you can find us on Facebook. When we come back from a short break, we still have uh, members of the Cape Town Philharmonic U Youth Orchestra with us in studio. Brilliant. Of course, they've got <laughs> a great uh, international summer music festival happening tomorrow at the City Hall. And of course, on the 19th of January, you can catch them live at Kirsten Bay. One of the most be beautiful special. settings yeah. you can expect to yeah. see a concert at. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're live yes. with Expressive on the 15th of January. Back to school day. We've been asking you guys to please share some of those back to school memories with us. Maybe new memories being made this morning, yes. dropping little one off. Um, we are getting very nostalgic ourselves thinking of those first day back, not just for your first day of school, but any day back at school was always exciting and yeah, a brave absolutely. new passage. So let's see what y'all have been saying. Oh, Harrison Lube says, good morning. I still recall my first day at school vividly in 1998. This guy 
guy bullied me oh, oh. and took my chair oh. and, I, and I left and went home to my mom crying. Oh, I was traumatized. <laughs> my mom came back with me to school. Anyway, talk about a false start to my school life. Oh, oh, you know what, man. bullies, you go and... I, but I don't think, I think kids at that age don't realise that they're bullying. They're just like, you know, they're impulse driven. But um, well done for being brave, mm -hmm. man. Well done. Let's see if we've got another nice one coming up there. Uh, Maribana, um, Salamori saying in 2005, I started grade one. My uh, registered teacher was Mrs. Hudson. Hey, Mrs. Hudson, if you're watching. <laughs> um, she then mentioned to us, uh, colour in the whole class went mute. Her face in disbelief. Again, she said, colour in. In our home language, we said, um, Ari qui she. Ari qui she she. Qui she she, <laughs> meaning we don't understand you. She then took a paper and a crayon and conveyed the color in. We all laughed and said, and hoi kaya she she. Um, <laughs> why didn't she just say so all along? From then, we knew. English. Oh, man. Hey, that brings it into focus. That's yes. so cool, man. Maribana, yes. thanks for that. And the next one is from Lebohang Sejam. Se Se and uh, Lebohang says, I remember my first day in high school. I went to school with gray socks because I misplaced my new maroon socks. <laughs> and the chairperson <laughs> of the SGB caused a scene for me and my friend. But after that, it was great with me being the most talkative person in class. <laughs> and that's why you have to buy things in twos. Yeah, but sometimes a mishap at things. the beginning is <laughs> good because it gets you noticed, gives you a talking exactly. point, it makes you relevant. It's you know? a converse, conversation starter. Oh, I love it. Okay, <laughs> let's get through one more here. Uh, Daldre Lospar <gasps> saying, I wet my pants for the whole first week oh, in no. sub A because my brother told me there was a boogeyman in the toilet and he didn't want to take oh, me long. No. Yo, oh, no. Deirdre. Your brother needs, I hope he got a spanking back in the day when it yes. was still legal, actually. <laughs> that is awful, man, dear Jay. We feel your mean. pain. There is no, for anyone now watching, there is no boogeyman in the toilet. You go when you need to. You put up your hand and you say, ma'am, sir, I need to go to the toilet. And you go, oh, shame. That broke my heart a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely so. Oh, so sweet. Well, let's reconnect right now with some new learners taking those brave new steps. Go, go. So we, the bell has rung now and it's time to get into the class. Now I have the beautiful grade one learners of 2020 and of course, Miss Claire Brownlee with us. Claire, how are you feeling as this first day approaches? It's the start of a new year. Um, nervous and excited. It's always good to start a year, new year and to see all these lovely children who've arrived in my class. So, <laughs> How did you prepare for the first day? Was there a lot of mental preparation, emotional preparation maybe? Um, we had a big move because this is a new classroom for us. We've opened a new grade R, so we've moved into an old grade R classroom. So we've had lots of moving and shuffling and making it pretty and getting it ready for all of them and a bit of mental preparation as well. I can imagine now, listen, have you seen a lot of tears this morning? Because I've seen a few tears, not anyone here, but have you seen a lot of tears this morning? Just a few, but I think it's just a bit of nervousness and I think after we've all settled in, the tears will be gone. Absolutely. Now, if you have a final word just to calm the parents, maybe calm the kids down that's a bit nervous, a bit excited for the start of the, uh, uh, a new uh, class, what would that words be? Um, to enjoy your day, to have fun, to know that Miss Brownie is here to look after you, just like your mummies and daddies would. Yes, and so we just have a really good day. Awesome. Now, kids, I want you guys to give me a big smile. Everyone give me a big smile. And then on three, you're going to say, oh, yes. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, yes. Are you ready? They are ready and ready to start a brand new journey. And so now we are going to go back to you guys in a studio with some news headlines. By the end of today, I'm going to get the full story of why Kutle's first day of school was so traumatic. But she's, she'll be getting there. We're anyway, This is a safe place. You can talk about it. But uh, well done to all our learners. I must say, taking it like champions. Likewise, Absolutely. the parents. All the best of luck. Um, thank you so much, Jamie, for connecting us to those cutie pies. Let's uh, delve back into our news headlines.
Ah, Jamie Lee cutting her teeth as a grade one teacher, doing a great job at it. But let's take a look at the national news headlines at the top of the hour. The Gauteng Education Department has reluctantly thrown a lifeline to parents of grade one and grade eight pupils who were late with their applications for the 2020 school year. Education MEC Panyazali Sufi said online registration was reopened at midnight last night to give them another chance. Meanwhile, President Cyril Ramaphosa says South Africa is embarking on a new trajectory of self-generation of energy. He was addressing the second annual business economic indaba in Santon. On the international front, the United States wishes to reduce its military presence in Africa. Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley said yesterday it wishes to focus more on responding to threats posed by Russia and China. Now, a tourist in Thailand has become the first person outside China diagnosed with a new pneumonia-like virus that has already infected dozens of people. One person has succumbed and 41 cases of the virus have been recorded so far. And finally, another day and another accolade. Sia Kolisi was yesterday voted the UK Rugby Union Writers Club Personality of the Year for 2019 for leading South Africa to their emotional World Cup triumph in Japan. The Springbok captain bagged the annual Pat Marshall Memorial Award at the RUWC's annual dinner in London following a poll of its 200 plus members. The shortlist for the 2019 award, named after the former Daily Express rugby correspondent, was dominated by South Africa with coach Rossi Rasmus and scrum half Faf de Klerk also nominated. Colisi follows in the footsteps of greats such as the inaugural recipient, Welshman Mervyn Davies in 1976, the late John Alomu, Martin Johnson, Johnny Wilkinson, Dan Carter and former Springbok captain Francois Pinard. A big congratulations to Captain, our captain. On that note, let's reflect on the latest sporting headlines. A current great in rugby to a past great or maybe not so much in cricket after hitting 40 from 32 deliveries in his debut for the Brisbane Heat in the Big Bash League in Australia. Former Proteus star A.B. de Villiers has now stated that he would love to return to the South African national team. And of course the T20 World Cup might provide that opportunity. Staying with cricket, Aaron Fincher and David Warner led Australia to a 10-wicket win over India that was in the first one-day international in their series in Mumbai. On the rugby front, uh, something to throw forward to the junior Springboks. They'll face England, Fiji and hosts Italy. That's in Pool C of the 2020 World Rugby Under-20 Championships taking place across four different Italian cities. Then moving to football in our action last night, Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur. They advanced to the FA Cup fourth round after beating Middlesbrough 2-1 in a replay of their third round at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last night. And staying with big news in football, defending La Liga champions Barcelona, they have sacked their head coach Ernesto Valverde and announced that former Real Betis coach Kike Setin will now take charge of the Spanish Giants. And that's where we leave our sporting headlines for now. Let's have the final look at what's happening on the roads this morning, starting off with in KwaZulu Natal, Umgomaz, there is protest action on the N2 northbound before the Umgomaz River. The road is closed in both directions. Please use the R102 alternative route this morning. And in the Western Cape, Ikwezi Park on the N2 outbound, there is a stationary vehicle before the R300 obstructing the emergency lane. Delays can be expected. Be patient on the roads this morning. And lastly, Metro Rail Central Line, the train service between Cape Town and Chris Honey and um, Gabdane's Club remains suspended indefinitely due to extensive vandalism. Please allow for an extended travel time of 30 to 40 minutes on the Levistown line. That's your 8 o'clock traffic roundup. Right now, let's have a look at the weather. We always ask you to send in your sunrise pictures. Thank you to the following people for sending their sunrise pictures. Starting off with Louise Sherry for your incredible sunrise picture. From Amanz Dordi and Alan Rudniki for your beautiful skyline. Um, from Cape Town as well as Sam Cross for your amazing sunrise from Durban. And lastly, but definitely not least, Fata Khan for your sunrise picture from Richards Bay. Please do the same tomorrow. Share them with us on our social media platforms. And uh, now to have the final look at the rest of the country, starting off with Bologwane with the minimum 
of 15 degrees, reaching a maximum of 28 degrees. In Bombela, peaks at 29 with a low of 18 degrees. And in Pretoria, partly cloudy day with a low of 17, reaching a high of 30 degrees. And the lowest temperature in the country is in Johannesburg with a low of 15, reaching a high of 28. Mahikeng, 18.31. And Klikstorp is the same at 18.31. Kimberley peaks at 37 degrees today at with a low of 20 degrees. And clear skies for Bloemfontein with a low of 16, reaching a high of 33 degrees. Richards Bay, 21.31. And Peter Maritzburg, 1830. Northeastly wind of 15 kilometers an hour in Durban with a maximum of 30 degrees with a minimum of 22 degrees. M Tad 1734 and high humidity for East London at a peak of 30 degrees with a low of 22 degrees. Plenty of sunshine for Cradock at 38 degrees with a low of 18. And Port Elizabeth, temperatures ranging from 21, reaching a high of 28. High humidity for George at a max of 26 with a minimum of 20 degrees and if you are in Sutherland expect a low of 19 reaching a high of 37 degrees south easterly wind of 28 kilometers an hour in Cape Town with the max of 27 and a low of 21 Vusta 18 at 29 and Springbok a high of 38 with a low of 21 and the highest temperature in the country is in Uppington with a maximum of 41 degrees and a minimum of 26 degrees that's the final look at the weather this morning wherever you are whatever the weather make sure to have yourselves an incredible Wednesday morning. All right, time for some music on this Wednesday morning. And we have members of the Cape Philharmonic Youth Orchestra and the Cape Philharmonic Orchestra joining us ahead of their 14th annual International Summer Music Festival that kicks off tomorrow. And of course, it's something that you don't want to miss. And here's a little snippet of what you can expect. A piece called Grand Polonaise. <laughs>
Beautiful stuff, Gabriela. Thank you very, very much. And of course, you can catch Gabriela as well as the rest of the Cape Town uh, Philharmonic Youth Orchestra uh, at Kirsten Bosch on the 19th of January, performing at the Kirsten Bosch Summer Concert Festival. Oh, beautiful stuff. And of course, you don't want to miss out on that. So check out the details online. In fact, in the meantime, while you do that, also link up with us on our Expresso Morning Show SABC3 Facebook page and let us know what you think of all this beautiful music. When we come back from a short break, we engage with the culinary hotline. Bling! Ting, ting, ting! And we're making all kinds of delicious masala today in the kitchen. Support Crush in giving away another 20,000 pairs of school shoes to children in need. Buy a Crush, dial the number on the pack, and stand the chance to win your share of 500,000 rand. Hashtag share the goodness. Made with love by Clover. on your cell phone culinary hotline bling that can only mean one thing welcome back to your feel good breakfast show on this Wednesday morning and it is time right now for the culinary hotline bling 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 now uh, it is the new year and it's the perfect time to get rid of all those old stale spices in your cupboard and to mix your very own secret masala mixture. And it's also a good time to learn something new, like making your own rotis. Uh, now, that's exactly what we are going to be doing today in the kitchen and guiding us on this aromatic journey. We have lovely Zayan Khan in the kitchen once again, and of course, with Anel joining us. Of course, remember to post all of your comments and questions to our social media pages. We would love to engage with you. Happy New Year, Zayan. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you. Excellent, excellent. I'm very excited to learn about this because I understand that each person and each family have their own kind of way of mixing a masala. A masala is not a masala, it's your masala. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah? And my grandmother, as my mom says, her mixture, her recipes is a handful of this and a handful of that and a few of this and a few of that and then you just know. Yeah. That's how it is. All right, so we're looking forward to being educated on that, uh, Anel. <laughs> I'm a lazy makota, man come out of the box. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> lazy makota, do it. <laughs> wow. All right. So what are the fundamentals of a good masala? You can go ahead. But okay. I can say a few. My favorites are the cardamom pods. I love cardamom and cumin. Those two are my top fundamentals. Cardamom yeah. and cumin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think one thing in South Africa is we're so lucky that we get such access to great spices. Mm. So it really doesn't matter because all of the mixes that you can make, they must just be fragrant. But yes. things that you always find are things like cloves, um, yes, some um, cardamom, some fennel seed. Often you can also get mustard, which we don't have here, some mm -hmm. chili, um, and then the sweetness, like the cloves and the aniseed, called jana, like the, ah, what's the name in English again? Coriander. Coriander. Mm -hmm. And then there is nutmeg, your nutmeg. This is mm. nutmeg. This is nutmeg. Oops, now uh, gaat and this is a black cardamom pod. Mm, more see? smoky, oh. yeah. Yeah, more smoky. Beautiful. Oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This reminds me of, of when, when Zola and I took the trip to India um, to cut, just kind of discover the flavor of India and the spices. Mm -hmm. Then you'd walk into these spice shops where they'd have these bags, yeah. Yeah. each of them filled with like spices. Sacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sacks. Not even bags, yeah. sacks of spice. Yeah. And the whole um, shop would just be... Just intoxicating to me. Yeah, just dancing in the yeah, air. Definitely. Beautiful stuff. Okay, but so is there a specific formula and an equation? Uh, like you said, your, your grandma just goes, a handful 
full of this and that. Oil and this and this. Is, is I think it, the you, trick mm -hmm. is that you want to, so these you've already done, but you want to lightly roast them. And as my yes. mom says, everything I know, I know from my mother. Mm. As my mom says, you once you start smelling it, turn the pan off. Then you know oh. it's done. Because it burns can, very quickly, exactly. eh? And then oh, it's so really fine. fine. So that's yeah. how you release the, the, the flavor and the aroma. It's the, the oil. Oils. There's a little bit of oil inside the yeah. seeds, yes. in any seed. So mm -hmm. as you warm them up, that releases the oil. It melts that, a little bit in that kind mm. of... And that's also the it. trick. If you're buying spices and you cannot smell them, don't buy them. You okay? Then you know. <laughs> then you know. Yes. It's finished. But that's a bit of a dilemma now because you're at, at a shop and now you can't smell it through but the packet. But you should be able to smell it through, through the, the packet. Yes. Yes. <gasps> okay. Okay. I'm right. gonna see you in the shop now, like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, next to while, while I'm okay, holding no. an apple, like. <laughs> and, then, and then social media, it's like, oh, cake, what do you got? Cake. Spotted. Okay. So what have you got in there, in there for the masala mix? I've got pepper in here so far, and then I've got cloves mm -hmm. and cumin, or what is this? That's fennel. 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 Oh, yes, yes. Okay, what else is this? This is? That's some cinnamon. Cinnamon. Some sweetness. <gasps> I love the warmth of the cinnamon and the sweetness of the cinnamon. Okay, okay and this and is then. cumin. That's the cumin, a.k.a. jira. Mm -hmm. That's okay. like the number one use spice. Yes. For us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. In everything. And I like my spices whole. <laughs> really? You see, now this thing about whole spices, some of us prefer whole, but like my husband and my father, if you should leave that caramonk whole in this anything, <gasps> in the, if it's masala, <laughs> if it's tea amino, if it's curry, and someone bites into it, it's the most so offensive, offensive thing. So offensive. Why is it offensive? Because it's like such a flavor it. explosion. That's the thing. It takes and over your whole mouth. And it, it maybe might feel like the cook did didn't really invest as Ooh. much time, love. love, and passion into preparing the dish when you bite into a whole clove and you're like, <laughs> Exactly. Am I, everything. Yeah, exactly. Am I doing you great like real elbow grease for this? Yeah, you must use that Cut. whole arm, whole Cut. shoulder. Come, okay, come, let, come, let, come, 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 What do you know about me? You see, the, me, I, I first get the, the big, the big whole pieces just kind of beaten out and then... Stumpler. Exactly. And then, and then, then it's, grind. It's, 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 in, it's in the wrist. It's in the hip section. Some Indian blood, blood in you, I know that. I can see there's something oh, from your ancestors. That popped into yeah. my nose. Do you smell it? That's amazing. Okay. And we need some curry leaves in there as go, well. Go, 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 yeah. go. SMS the keyword SPICE to 33728. We'll send you uh, how we have made this masala, the ingredients list of what you'll need to make. This is so therapeutic as well. I feel like <laughs> I'm doing something useful for humanity. Can you smell this? This is the time. one. So that's what it is when it's finished. Isn't it fantastic? Good stuff. Absolutely. All right, I'll but tell you, you know what? what? Cumin. Cumin is a big thing there. I'm going to challenge myself to see whether at the end of the show I can turn this. Have a look at this. So that's what it looks like in here. Into that. that. Don't know if I will, but okay. <laughs> Gee, on to Keep you. Keep on buddy. going. Keep on <laughs> going. Got a long way to go. Enthralling spices to enthralling destinations. My favorite time of the week where Imagine Cruising take us on a flight of fancy. They entice us to explore the most exotic shores on the planet. Josie Evely, the new face attached to the brand, is back with another stunning cruise. It's a beautiful one and it's really inexpensive. The value for money is insane. This is something that I think you need to consider right now. Uh, Josie, welcome back. Um, flying solo now. Um, and what a Joel, your job, because you get to... <laughs> To explore, and hopefully they're going to send you on lots of cruises to, to, to test out the brand, world. Gotta the brand, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, they're going to have to, but uh, where are we headed today? Today we are returning to Europe, and we are going to the Eastern Mediterranean, um, a place known for obviously being really rich in history and culture, and having these tales of mythology, some mm. of the best weather, and um, the greatest beaches pretty much on Earth, so I'm all for it. Um, we begin our beautiful adventure in Venice, which is known as one of the most romantic cities in the world. Um, and you have a two-night stay there to really explore and get to grips with Venice, which is something you have to see once in your life yeah, at the very least. Yeah. Um, and then from there, there's a seven-night cruise, um, which obviously heads all around the eastern Mediterranean, where you get to explore uh, Qatar, as well as uh, some of the Greek islands, which also fame for their beauty, including Mykonos and the crowd pleaser Santorini. Yeah, um, I, I think some of the most popular beaches, as you say, in the world, Do anywhere. Get. Best time um, I've ever had. <laughs> um, and I, I love the fact that you've lived most of these destinations already, so you can speak with authority. But I, I love the what the Med offers and the, the balance of history. I mean, it's where culture began, our yeah. culture at yeah. least. Um, we, we certainly love that balance, but 
Um, the best part about this whole trip is, and it's an amazing price, 27,999 Rand starting for an inside cabin. What does this cover? You're so right. I think for what you see, 27,999 Rand includes so much value. So for that, you get two nights in this beautiful hotel in Venice, um, where you really do get enough time to really explore. And then that also includes a seven night cruise um, covering all of those beautiful islands. And with that, it's full board. So you've got your, um, obviously all your meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You've got snacks. Um, and that also includes flights and taxes. So I mean, it's it's actually crazy to be, to be fair. Um, and then on top of that, just so that you can quench your thirst and really kick back and relax <laughs> and um, cruise in style. There's also um, this drinks package which you get um, added to that which includes sort of local beers, select wines, um, spirits, cocktails, whatever you want, it's, it's in there. You can try all of them. In fact, um, I love it, man. It starts with the list starts draft beer. Okay. Um, I like that. Um, you're on the MSC Opera, a ship that, from my experience um, with the guys from Imagine, that yeah. this stands out for its onboard offerings. Big time. I think intimate, refined luxury is what comes to mind with this beautiful ship. Um, obviously, has a little bit of an Italian theme, and there's also a slight musical theme. So, as the name oh. alludes to, there's a concert, a concert venue on board. There's also um, a beautiful piano bar and a sea view disco essential for those <laughs> nights out <laughs> and boogie nights so all of that is um, part of the sort of onboard entertainment and then if you want to relax and just sort of have some me time there are saunas there's a beautiful spa Turkish baths and you're gonna be eating a lot of extra extra calories let's be fair <laughs> um, so there's also some ways to burn it off there's a walking track or a running track there are incredible facilities so from mini golf to the gym You've got it all, and you will be enjoying the amazing Italian uh, cuisine, which is obviously on offer. I love the, the running track, because you can go around, you can tour the boat, and you can see the you next thing you're going to do. You're going to be like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm going to go there. That's where I'm going to go on this night. Um, I absolutely love it. It's beautiful, beautiful destinations as well that we're going to delve into. Um, I think I've gained a few pounds just thinking about it, but I can work them off. I now know. Um, a great all-inclusive cruise around the Mediterranean and some of the most beautiful Greek islands on the planet, including the romantic city of Venice tonight stay there in fact and the idyllic island of Santorini is a must bucket list item undoubtedly you can savor the sights and tastes of these places yourself by picking up the phone and doing it right now 0861 777245 the price starts at an incredible 27,999 rand that's including your flights and taxes guys that's amazing join us after the break and we learn a little bit more about the fantastic uh, nine night holiday cruise and some of those destinations we're going to be uh, uh, disembarking off the MSC Opera 4. Us on your cell phone. Come in very hard, my bling. That can only mm. be one. Welcome thing. back to your feel good breakfast show live, large and in charge with the culinary hotline. Bling! Sing, sing, sing. 
back in the kitchen again. Uh, and now for the part that we've all been waiting for, we're going to be le learning how to make a roti or ruti, whichever way you, you choose to pronounce it, but making it from scratch. Mm -hmm. And our roti guru, Zayan Khan, is going to show us just how to do this. Remember to post all of your questions and comments on our social media pages. Okay, so this is something that is quite cool if you can do it. Totally. Um, and I'm hoping it's not too difficult because we want people out there to try it at home, right? It's not difficult at all. This was one of my first like culinary jobs at mm. home. I had to make sure that the rutis were done. So by Friday for lunch after mask, there were rutis for the curry. Wow. Yes. So this is how kind of I grew up. This is so my role. So you'd make the dough, freeze it, and then yeah. on the day, uh, exactly. be able to cook freeze it. Exactly. Freeze it? Yes, you can freeze oh, it once really? it's done, yeah. Oh, so, so my suggestion, the recipe that we're sending out is going to make you about seven or eight. Okay. But you can do this in bulk. That's mm -hmm. even better. Whoa. And then you freeze them yeah. and then you have 30 in the freezer. Okay. Because you go through them quickly. Yes, they are delicious. Yeah. Okay, so what do we need? Okay, so we've got some flour. Mm -hmm. We've got, um, and this is a mixture of flour and self-raising flour, some salt, some soft butter. This we'll use in the end. Some tepid water. Water. Some recipes called for boiling water, not boil very hot water. Some recipes called for cold water. We use tepid water. Why? Right. Why? Yeah. It may, as far as I understand, and I could be wrong, but it helps to create a different texture. Okay. okay. And so there are different ruti recipes, right? Yes. And the the one that we're sending out to everyone is go as it's. You know, it says leave overnight, leave overnight. So it technically takes two days, but we are going to hack that. Okay. And we're making the quick version, which is just as good. So this would be me at home right now. You just said tepid yeah. water. Big question mark, huh? Tepid, <laughs> just a bit warmer than room temperature. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So All you right. want it to help the everything along. And, and the longer you need it, the more gluten, the smoother mm. it is, it's oh, still busy. <laughs> I still have okay. the end of the show. We're good. So oh, we're going to no. mix like a nice, healthy five-finger pinch of salt. Uh-huh. I'm going to crunch that in there. Good. And then... Then the trick here is you want to, I'm going to use this one, mm -hmm. you want to create um, kind of a, a texture with the flour and the butter. You can use oil as well. You can okay. use a mixture of butter and oil. So oh, that... Would that be regular sunflower oil? It can be what, any oil, any, yeah. Any oil. Okay. I mean, it's nice with the regular oils because then the temperature, you can you can fry it liquor, you know? Yes, yes. What type of texture are you looking for? Here you want something like a soft bread. Yeah. Crumb. Can you yeah. see how it's yeah, beginning yeah, yeah. to... Yeah. Okay. Usia means Ming. By yeah. the way, SMS the keyword <laughs> eat to 33728 and we'll send you a link to the recipe and as well. Then you're going to start yes. adding, you're going to mix, 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 and once it's good, it looks good, you're going to start adding your water. Mm -hmm. And then you just start to knead and knead and knead and knead until you get to the kind of consistency that Anel is busy with here. Okay, okay. So like a, like a normal dough. Yeah. Uh, what happened to the butter? Show you now. Oh, okay, I so it's still that. part of the recipe. We haven't yeah. found. And you add and add. So you, you want to do it quite slowly and gradually. You want to do it gradually because then it just, it's easier to yeah. mix. Yeah. But you can also put everything together. I mean, I've never done it in like a, in a mixer, but I'm sure you could mm. do that also. Okay. The whole thing with Ruti is it's by the hands, man. It's yeah. love. Mm, 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 so be absolutely. sure to take all your jewelry off. Okay. Okay, so you continue adding water and then a nulls. Is this thin enough now? Rolling that it out. That is rolling it out, yeah. And there's Why nice you... techniques of rolling it out because you can... Now you've done it somewhere like that, right? So if you want to, you want to go for a kind of a circle. Oh, okay. Into, so now you can spread them out. Yeah. Question. When you are rolling it out like that, why, why now did you keep turning it over? It's just to get the shape, like a different shape. Yeah. And like okay. to make sure that it's evenly... Um, rolled out. Okay. And in this process, you're also encouraging the gluten to like stick fuss. Okay. Okay. Now, um, what do I do now? This now is the interesting you take, part. Yeah. Now you're going to take your fingertips. Oh. Sure. In love hands, right? Yes. And you're going to create texture. Oh. All wow. over the place. Okay. Right? Okay. And what? No. No dirt. No dirt is a smear of butter. Consumer use a spoon. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is the thing. This is like the. <laughs> all over Wowzers. the place. Yeah, all over the place. More you can butter, make it, you better. can spread that down. Okay. I even I use my bottles. fingers. Yeah, get in there yeah. with okay. the hands. I'm I know. <laughs> your beautifully manicured fingers. There we go. Oh, oh, oh yes. That's How does that, that feel? feels good. <laughs> <laughs> and then what you do from here, yeah, it's very similar to, I guess, like layered pastry, but now you make a big <gasps> flung. Oh, oh, wow. So you're going to give yourself a snake. So right? you're going to have that beautiful buttery flavor exactly. infused in there. And now. to be honest, what happens now is you leave it for at least 15 minutes yes. to an hour, sometimes overnight. Yeah. Okay, so and this allows it to be 
This is what makes it good buttery uh, and also flaky rooty. Mm. And then you would roll it out again. Yes. And repeat this process. Can you roll it out now? Let's try and do that. Mm, we can try, definitely. Might be a mess, Anel, because we didn't when have When we're doing it live hours. on TV. No. <laughs> you <laughs> have Let's to. see. Let's see. Because oh, we want to yeah. make a roti. This is so, so, you so close therapeutic, it. just watching yeah, you Yeah, because do otherwise this. it's going to split. Okay. Okay. Okay, and we just like, you know, say a prayer and ask it. I'm going to use my mama's recipe. <laughs> what is that? Rolling pin. Oh, okay, that's a... So this is specifically for flatbread. Okay. So you can really see the buttery layers. That's mm. a big see the thing. the poofiness, yeah. The what? The, the poofiness. poofiness. It's a very scientific okay, term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we get liquor, like rice dough. There we go. I don't know if it'll work so liquor, but let's try. Here we go. Just, just put some love in it, think, think yes. happy thoughts. And you only roll it out once, because with puff paste, really, you have to roll it out like three or again four and five again. times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. SMS the keyword EAT to 33728. And then once it's done, um, how do you cook it properly? You make it beautiful. I'll show you now. Golden. So let's say, oh, we've missed the whole step, but let's say, because now what we do is we roll it out again. Yes. And we say we take it into a snake. Yes. Hang on one second. We take it into a snake like we did before and then we cut it into pieces. Yes. And that's already again rolled up. And then you roll it out into a dough ball and then you fry it. That's a big routine. Whew. Yeah, so that, yeah that would be a massive one. <laughs> Share it with the whole family. SMS the keyword E to 33728. So by now, uh, hopefully you know how to make your own masala and you know how to make your Can own Can I put my hands routine? on there, please? please because go. I've and, got uh, so much butter on here. <laughs> go for it. And uh, while you do that, yeah. Arnel, um, we're going to take a break from the kitchen. When we come back, we'll be making... Are we making this today? Are we making the, the bean... Um, we're making the bean curry, bean yeah. curry, using the masala that we have yeah. created early on. Okay, good stuff. Uh, that looks amazing. Uh, do send us your questions and your comments to Expresso That's Morning Show SABC3. That's our Facebook page. And we'll be back again with the Culinary Hotline. Bling! 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 We are back with Josie, okay. who's been sharing all of the details about a pretty fabulous nine-night cruise holiday from Venice to the Greek islands on board the beautiful MSC Opera with a free drinks package on board. I know I keep stressing that, but it's important, okay? Um, all for the amazing starting price of just 27,999 Rand, including flights and taxes. That's crazy. All you need to do right now, in fact, pick up the phone, call 0861 247 to book your place. If sailing away on the fabulous MSC Opera sounds like your kind of holiday. I mean, this has got to be everyone's kind of holiday. Josie, we are going to the Greek islands. We've got the romance of Venice. We're on board an amazing ship. But I know that these very special prices generally are attached to a particular date. When does this disembark? You're 100% correct. Uh, this 27,999 Rand starting price is for the trip departing on the 16th of October. But this, this year, okay, this this year yeah, on there on we are. But there is also this exact cruise available from May until October. If those dates don't suit you, it just may be a different price point, and then you'll have to cross reference the website to double check. Okay. But it's worth it. I mean, that's kind of value. Oh, move things crazy. around if you have yeah. to move things Set around. Set those dates in the diary. Yeah, this is a special one. Okay, so um, we start in Venice. What is it about uh, Venice that makes it so special? Romance, yeah? It's. I think it is romance. I think you've, you've hit the nail <laughs> on the head there. Um, it's called, and lovingly uh, called, the, the floating city, obviously because it's quite literally just bodies of water. water. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I mean, the gondola ride is something that's a non-negotiable. You have to do it. Um, there's also sort of local fable that under every bridge you have to kiss as a couple, and there's a lot of bridges, so good luck to everyone. Um, but no, it's just incredible, incredible city to explore and is, is unlike any place on earth. Um, love it. Beautiful history again as well, but a, a great way to kind of feel like you're getting away from the real world and entering this kind of fantasy space. A hundred percent. That sounds incredible. Where to from there? So from Venice and all the sort of uh, ticks that you have to do there, including the sort of uh, St. Marco's Square and all of that, you then head to uh, Qatar, which is obviously Montenegro, and you have a really awesome chance to get off and explore this little town, which has got beautiful buzz, um, lots of little cafes and restaurants and wine streets um, and obviously some great local um, cuisine so sort of smoked hams cheeses olives mm. all the good things it's a really really nice to sort of um, just soak up the ambience around you and then from there um, 
the highlight, obviously, is always uh, one of one of the most famous things about the Med is the Greek islands. So from there we head to the magical Mykonos, um, which is known, obviously, as a little bit of a celebrity hotspot. Beautiful, beautiful people aplenty, um, <laughs> and obviously is known for its whitewashed steps and the famous windmills. Um, and also, it's quite easy to navigate on foot. Um, there's quad bikes which have kind of taken over there, so you can choose your transport, but really get around. And from beautiful beaches uh, to great, obviously, Greek food, um, it's just it's the ultimate um, I, I would suggest yeah you, know, you want to explore but you also want to appreciate the beach and uh. that's the nice thing is you, you unpack once you know once you've left Venice you're on the board uh, on board the ship you unpack once you leave it and then you get to enjoy each one of these these incredible I was, spaces I was about to say keep a good outfit for Santorini <laughs> as well um, Mykonos <laughs> maybe where the beautiful people hang out but Santorini is um, for me such a highlight obviously the best sunset in the world is kind of what it's dubbed for um, it, yeah man. super iconic Look little whitewashed blue houses oh. blue, blue domes it's absolutely incredible and I don't think think you'll ever be able to experience a sunset like you will uh, in Santorini. Some of the other highlights from the, the, the Greek Isles? Oh, um, I think from there we, we then go to Kefalonia, which is um, as famous, but um, is a little bit more inclined to your beach days. So that's where okay. there's some beautiful beaches. Wow. Um, and once again, a great opportunity to tuck into some great Greek cuisine. Um, but I mean, look at the water, it itself. Know, that's, um, it's so like that's, out of a movie, that's really yeah. exciting. And that sort of ends the Greek trio of islands that you visit. And then the really exciting thing is from there, you head back to Italy um, to a place that I'm really excited about. It's been a bit of a buzzword in travel last year and it's not stopping anytime soon. We head to Bari, which is uh, the capital of Puglia. And um, yeah, I think all the local Italians have been doing it for, for ages. That's their holiday spot. Um, and this place is also famed for obviously incredible incredible beaches um, it's got a famous basilica so you can do some city exploring but i think you need to factor in um some time in in bari at the end um, i love that and if you if you discover a particular cuisine that you love and you didn't have time to get to it then of course you've got the italian cuisine on the ship that you can delve into when you get back um, it really is enticing beautiful uh, i think a nice balance of exploration and relaxation which exactly. is what you want on holiday and for just uh, 27,999 Rand this Mediterranean holiday. It includes a two night hotel stay in the gorgeous Venice and a seven night all inclusive cruise on board the Italian themed MSC Opera. We'll be back after the break to talk about some more of the highlights from the spectacular holiday. And did I mention that that's flights and taxes included? That is crazy. Just go straight in, don't need to... Is it uh, not broadly? No, okay. just go. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Call 
us on your cell phone. Come and marry Hotline Bling. That can only mean one Welcome thing. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show on this Wednesday morning time. Right now, once again, for the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting. And it is Veganuary, <laughs> yes. A lot of people have pledged to eat only plant-based foods in the month of January, including me. Yes, I've oh. Oh, tried failed super hard over the weekend, but it's okay. No, it was just one of those things. It's okay, it's okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Now. Really I'll be back okay. on the horse today. Uh, but anyway, uh, everyone in the studio is very, very um, excited because we're learning all kinds of uh, things about making, uh, we learned how to make a masala, and look at this. So far, mm -hmm. so good. So I said good. that by the, end of the, by the end of the show, yeah. I'd try to have it looking like this one over here, and so far, I'm not doing too badly, right? You're doing great. And uh, we've also uh, learned how to make a Mm -hmm. from scratch mm -hmm. uh, we've given you both recipes and now we're gonna be making this wonderful bean curry that would go with your roti yeah. right yeah. yes and I also joined Veganuary yes as you know so this is especially for that for our um, evening meals Kat so this is for you for tonight okay good, good. You, uh, the ideas I just need the ideas once they're there we can yeah. just get into so tell me how you them. failed that's all I want to know what did oh, you eat man. what did you really? eat really please I want to hear it fried, confess fried chicken <laughs> it, was just, it was like, it was a Saturday and I was like, just very lazy. <laughs> Gosh, and I'm salivating just thinking even, about it. <laughs> you didn't miss out on anything. Um, Zayan, how are you on, on Veganuary? Are you one of those people that are committed to a plant-based life kind of thing? Um, so we, in our household, we are mostly plant-based. That's cool. But I have to say, this baby wants to eat everything. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, now's not the time to be changing it's diet. Okay, yeah. eat anything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> well, hopefully um, um, he or she will love this. Yeah, I thought we're we gonna were going to have this for breakfast, not later on, you guys. No, 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 he's going to make it later on. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, SMS the keyword curry to 33728 if you'd like to make this bean curry. What do we need? So, Anna? Kat, we've, mm -hmm. we've got an onion in you there. We've just fried it till mm -hmm. it's a little bit brown. Yeah. And now I need your masala mix. Okay. Can I have a bit there of There we go. Yes, you can indeed. You can actually take this home tonight. You can, uh, Are you serious? Yeah. So you that can finish it off. Yeah. So I'm going to put like a big spoon in here. Uh -huh. I like a lot of flavor. In uh -huh. your klein biki. Yeah, yeah. And I really enjoy it because it's not too fine. I really enjoy this. Okay. Because so you, you, you like it for the texture, whereas yeah. the aunt said, not in her house. I doesn't like work that way. Chew it. <laughs> I'm a cumin girl, so I've added a little bit of extra cumin extra in here. Extra cumin. Why yeah. do you like the cumin flavor? I don't know. It's just uh, something. Also, it's in mm. me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got a bit of ginger, grated ginger. Fresh. Yeah, and grated um, garlic. Oh, yeah. it's, mm. it's easier to grate it um, yes. than to chop it. Just the oh. inner of the grater, the yeah. fine yeah, side yeah, of the yeah. grater, than to sit. Because if you chop it, it's going to take you forever. Yeah, that's chop true. It. Okay. Also, a question I have is that uh, using dry ginger and dry um, garlic, would that have a significant impact on the flavor? Oh. I think so. Definitely. I'm definitely a fresh garlic, fresh ginger. Okay. It hasn't got the but same But if you don't have access to garlic and ginger and you're using the powder, it's better to put the powder later. So okay. not here yeah. in the beginning. Oh, not now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I've I'll added what, some tomato. Sorry, Kat. Some genius needs to invent a way in which standard televisions at home could just... just smell a vision. Through. Smell a vision. Mm. What? 2020, guys, what's what's wrong with you? You need to smell it. They need to come now. Just... Yeah, oh, the kitchen smells amazing. Right I can now. smell it now. So I've got a bit of tomato, the tin of tomato in here, and you just normally um, cook it for about, say, 20 minutes with okay. your beans, and that's it. Yeah, because the beans are, are pretty done already. They are yeah. done already. Right? You drain the liquid and, and they're ready to go. A five finger pinch of salt, like you said just now, go. and a yeah. bit of pepper, <laughs> and that's it. And then you let it just like it simmer What's for about 15 to 20 minutes. So that would have been Oh, the masala. That, okay, so that's the, that's the one that's yeah. was pre-made. Okay. And, and now you would add water once you've yeah, a little down of it? A little bit of water. And how long do you cook it for? I cook it for about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. That's it. Then it's done. So when, it's a good student recipe also. Yeah. yeah. When do you decide to add cream into it? Is it if, you, if you want to thicken it up a little no bit? No cream. No cream necessary here. No cream necessary. It's veganuary. <laughs> oh, of course. Say. Oh, so Cat. This, is, this is where I trip up, and then I uh, Okay. So no. there is, I want you to taste it with a roti. Okay. And I want Zayan to yes. also taste my curry. With okay, but roti. can I show you this roti trick? Please yes. teach us how to so if you want with piece it. by piece, you take the roti either in half. Okay. And then you break like that. You see, I'm a novice. And then you can skip. I would have now gesickled it. So now we can, with our hands, mm -hmm. we can just... Take a scoop. I'm, I'm very, Curry for very breakfast. Excited. Can I also have a scoop, please? Mm -hmm. Is it like a cat? 
That's lovely. Do I just scoop it like that? Mm -hmm. That is lovely. Like that. <laughs> my big thing is my hands are always oh. dirty when I eat. And when my friend Leonard eats, it's like so beautifully and his fingers stay clean and... It's practice. And also, you got to lick afterwards, and now you can't expect them to stay clean without you licking. I'm going to lick my fingers on TV. The men say I'm a club. Dirty fingers is fine. Clean palms. Could you have added some heat to that as well if you wanted to? Definitely. Yes, they are chilly in here, but you can add some more heat. Okay. To it, yeah. Good. Lovely stuff. Mm, so so flaky. if you are doing the whole veganuary thing and you'd like to eat uh, nothing but vegetarian or plant-based foods for the month, the month of January, then this is the perfect recipe for you. Try it out at home. SMS the keyword curry to 33728. Thank you very much. Mm. High Pleasure. five. Thank you, And guys. with all your dirty fingers, Anel, high five to you. High five to you. Dirty fingers. <laughs> Enjoy your meal tonight. <laughs> oh, man, the smells that are wafting across this kitchen. So uh, let's um, enjoy. Enjoy more exploration this time, living vicariously through our friends at Imagine Cruising or taking us on the most amazing holiday. We are back with Josie, who's been sharing all of the details about this pretty fabulous nine-night cruise holiday around the beautiful Eastern Mediterranean on board the MSC Opera with all-inclusive cruising at an amazing price of just 27,999 Rand, all-inclusive including flights and taxes. So you've got to call 0861 777 to book now. If you like the sound of drifting down the canals of Venice in a gondola and strolling around the sun-kissed olive groves of the Greek islands, this is probably the best way to do the med. You've got a bit, a bit of cruise, a bit of beach, you've got a bit of culture, you've got a little bit of everything. Um, let's talk about this ship, because you've touched very briefly on it being uh, obviously in its own right quite a standout feature of the of the cruise. Can you expand on some of the entertainments um, that's on offer? I definitely can. Well, as the name sort of implies, the MSC Opera, um, there's a little bit of a musical theme happening. So um, one of the best ways to enjoy it is to grab a drink of choice and uh, enjoy it at the La Cabala sort of piano bar, which is a great feature. There's also a seafront disco, which is essential. And then there's the beautiful um, Del Opera Theatre as well, where you can get some really lively stage Acts, which is great and then for those that are looking to quieten things and slow it down a little bit there's an incredible onboard spa and Turkish baths and all the spoiling you need because it's holiday and you we should are on holiday. treat yourself and there are child minders as well that's it, something to, to bear in mind there we are yeah. there's also an arcade which is great to <laughs> send the kids to for a bit of virtual reality and um, but yeah, other than that I think the big thing with it being slightly Italian themed is that there's some great food um, on board so you've got two choices of a slightly more fine dining fancy option and La Caravelle is one of them and then there's another incredible option and then there's also a little bit of a more relaxed sort of buffet style at Laval um, and then also just sort of like a, another option for a little bit less a little less formal if you want to watch the view and grab something and make it a little bit more chilled uh, there's an option for that so so much an offer you're not going to be left wanting uh, for much to do on board and then there's the fitness and the pools there is and a track. stuff there is a track busy. around the whole ship that you can keep <laughs> running. You know, you have to feel bad about the food. Uh, exactly. Um, but it is, it's a, for me, it's the most important part of exploring a culture is through the food. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to do that, being able to do that in Italy and Venice, very important. Being able to do it in Greece, very important. Um, Montenegro as well, like you said, is famed for some of its food. So the food would be a standout feature for me, <laughs> undoubtedly. Um, what... what it's an intense itinerary. There are so many highlights. Everyone is almost a highlight feature, but if, if I could kind of force you to, to maybe pick two highlights of a, an itinerary like this. Um, oh, it's a tricky one. Um, I think you've you've nailed it there. It is very destination rich, and the great thing about this ship is that it is a little bit smaller than quite a few of the sister ships, so you can get into areas get into places that a lot like of other places yeah. <laughs> wouldn't be able to. And with that in mind, I think for me, the standout one has got to be Venice. Um, you get two nights, obviously, in a hotel stay to start before you uh, get on board with us. And I think um, it's one of those places in two days you can really do it properly. On foot, explore, not too much of a plan other than tucking into a lot of mouth-watering uh, cuisine. Um, and other than that, obviously, get on a gondola. Explore the things that you couldn't see down the winding pathways and, and experience it from the water looking back, which is incredible. And then there's the famous things that you can't go to Venice and not do. So from the Doge's Palace, which is really famous for sort of its Venetian Gothic architecture, to probably the most famous square in the world, St. Mark's, the where the pigeon. And <laughs> um, your Instagram will, will thank the, you for it, yeah. Beware the street food, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And you've experienced so many of these destinations. You've spent quite a lot of time there, in fact, yeah. um, fairly recently. Um, 
What other highlights could you recommend from a traveler's perspective, not just from a tourist, but someone who really wants to experience and, and live these destinations? Oh, I get asked this question so often, and I think my best holiday I've ever done was, was Greece. Really? Um, and Santorini was a place that I will never forget. It was, it was romance next level, and when I say it's the best sunset you'll ever see, it really is. So I think if you get to experience that in, once in your life, um, it's really, really awesome. And I think doing it from sort of a cruise is also a wholly different view of the, the beauty because when you're in it you can stroll down the stairs and go and explore sort of the ancient ruins of that um, that bronze sort of ancient ruins which is great there's obviously incredible oceans but I think seeing it from the outside in and looking back is is incredible just to sort of really realize where you are so I think Santorini is a big one quite surprising for the wine lovers is that there's some really, really great wineries there as well so let your internal sommelier come out yeah, when, when you're there and just just enjoy that place is it's so special I love it do a little bit of research I and there are so many kind of ways that you can approach traveling through an area like this from a yeah. foodie perspective, as you said, from a wine perspective. <laughs> um, or just purely <laughs> some of the best beaches in the world. Um, it sounds nice amazing. I need a holiday already and the year has <laughs> only begun. Uh, but this really could be a reality, an incredible trip um, that sounds like it is full of adventure, full of the best, that history, that life, that sun-bleached beaches have to offer, uh, to offer. And, of course, um, some beautiful and pretty healthy Mediterranean food as well thrown into the mix. So I think everyone needs a holiday like this at least once in their lifetime, if not once a year. <laughs> and it's a possibility from just 27,999 Rand. It could be you experiencing it for yourself. The package includes breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks on board, plus all the flights and taxes and drinks, as we've said. <laughs> um, you'll also be able to satisfy that thirst with a free easy drinks package on board, which does make a big difference. Trust me. And that includes draft beer, a selection of house wines, cocktails, soft drinks, hot drinks, the works, all of it could be yours. But I think the first thing you have to do now is, and you can do it right now this morning, the lines are open, dial 0861 777 and simply book your place. I think it's a cruise you will never, ever forget. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your feel-good breakfast show. It's a Wednesday morning, midway through the week. Everyone's going to school. Yeah. What a day it Luck has been parents. indeed. I hope you've handled it. Oh. <laughs> sure, sure. But uh, there, there has been big news also uh, breaking across the country. Uh, the body of prolific businessman and Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Richard John Peluana Maponya was laid to rest yesterday afternoon following a service in his beloved Soweto where President Cyril Ramaphosa delivered a stirring eulogy. Now, Ntadema Ponya passed away following a short illness last
last Monday, the 6th of January, a few days after celebrating his 99th birthday. Wow. He was dubbed the father of black retail in Mzanzi and his career as a pioneering entrepreneur spanned over 50 years. He started in the clothing industry uh, but was blocked from opening a clothing store by the then apartheid government. Mm. And then he went on to establish a Soweto milk delivery service and by the 1970s he owned a number of shops, petrol stations and car dealerships. Now his point of pride is of, is of course Maponya Mall which opened in 2007 on land that he had bought in the 1970s. Oh wow. Now, let's take That's a quick a listen answer. from yeah. the man himself on the legacy that he has left behind. This from a 2011 top billing interview with Os Basitana Kumaro. For as long as uh, I have good health, I must be of benefit to my community. And as a result of that, you know, I put up a mall which I fought for for 20, 28 years, by the way. I'm trying to put up a mall for the people of Soweto. And nobody would believe that uh, there could be a mall of that stature in uh, a place like Soweto. I want a first-class mall. I want a mall that can stand the test of time. One other thing that I, I will be doing, I, uh, I'm embarking on a, a, a skill and uh, entrepreneurship uh, at a training institution, which uh, I want it to be the legacy that I'm going to leave. I want to take on unemployment of our youngsters head on. The only day I'm going to retire is when you say to me, Lala Gatli, Hamba Gatli, goodbye. That will be my retirement time because then I'm going to sleep for a long time. I don't know when I'm going to wake up. <laughs> and those what a words. heartwarming Absolutely moment that is. Heartwarming. Yeah, and it's he, incredible. He certainly stuck by those words. I, I, lo I love the the manner with which he kind of just takes on with bravery to say, "I want to take on the unemployment yeah. factor of youth in South Africa head on." Like yeah. that is the challenge that I'm going to take on. Um, I, I think for me, it, you know, we hear the term legacy bandied about a lot, but there are layers of legacy being left here, and the fact mm. that he was until literally the day that he passed he was driving that that legacy uh, making it a reality is, is something quite special sure. and indeed right now we do say la la gase hamba gase ntate richard maponya after all that you have done for your community you deserve to rest easy and to your family to your friends our deepest condolences thank you for having him be a part of the greater legacy of south africa as well yeah. oh, on that note we're going to close down the show this morning uh, with another stirring performance from young mr brooks who you can catch on stage alongside the cape town philharmonic youth orchestra of course they've got a show running it starts off tomorrow at the city hall and then also on the 19th of january you can catch them at kirsten bosch for the summer concert but here they are right now one more time with a song called Chardas.
Espresso Morning Show, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production. Brooks, ladies and gentlemen. Wow.